Bowl Mania. And welcome everyone to the Citrus Bowl, presented by Overton's here on ABC, all part of Capital One Bowl Mania. From Camping World Stadium, the Irish taking the field. And all of their resplendence in 11 national championships. Taking on LSU, a couple of venerable esteemed programs whose alumni proudly declare dedication to the respective colors, including a couple behemoths. Some say my blood runs purple. That's because I am a tiger. I spell gold with an X. Words like Halloween night and Hail Mary. The Tigers pulled off another miracle. Touch my very soul. Never question LSU. We play to win, always. LSU wins the BCS National Championship. Who needs purple when you have a heart of gold? 130 years. 11 championships. Notre Dame will duly celebrate a national championship. No doubt, the Irish are number one. Coaches that transcend sport. Go, 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 go. And a mystique unmatched anywhere. You can't top Notre Dame. Don't even try. LSU. Notre Dame, New, New Year's, Year's Day. Day. Who, Who you got? A couple of pointed words from a couple of Hall of Famers, two of the best to ever do it, the bus and Shaq. That is the backdrop for today. Notre Dame and LSU going head to head for the 12th time in the series history. Both teams coming in at nine and three. Part of a great day of college football right here on ABC, the Rose and Sugar Bowl to follow. I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore. Quint Kessenick down in the field joining us in just a bit from all of us to all of you all the best in 2018. Rod we got a couple of teams ready to roll here oh, yeah. highly motivated for different reasons. I can tell you as a former player nothing motivates you like a big time opponent and each one is staring at another big time <laughs> opponent and they're raring to go and it also helps that both these teams want to get 10 wins. Mm. That's something that LSU hasn't done since 2015. And when you think about Notre Dame, they've only done it twice in the last 10 years. Yeah, great bounce back season for the Irish, only winning four games last year. We got a couple of fantastic dynamic running backs that key their respective offenses. You know, and sit back and enjoy because this may be the last time we see both of these running backs in college football. You start with Darius Geis. Yes, he's playing. Some speculation that he would sit out for the NFL. Uh-uh. He wants to play. And he is an angry running back. He is really good. He really delivers a blow. He needs just about 25 yards to get to 3,000 yards in his rushing career. And on the other side, Josh Adams. You know, the first few months of the season, everybody was dancing about what he was doing for Notre Dame. Fell off a little bit in November, wants to bounce back tonight. He's had seven runs over 60 yards this season. He is the home run hitter for the Irish. He's trying to make that band play and dance in the end zone today for Notre Dame. The last time these two teams met, it came down to a game-winning field goal a few years ago. Geis trying to be nice against Notre Dame. Kickoff coming up in a few. We'll hear from Quinn on the other side of this. Stick around. Welcome back, everyone, to Orlando. A little bit of drizzle downstairs. Notre Dame ready to kick off against LSU. But first, let's check in downstairs with Quinn Kessinick. Happy New Year, buddy. Thanks, Mark and Rod. Happy New Year to you guys as well. We may see two quarterbacks for Notre Dame in the Citrus Bowl, but Brandon Wimbush will get the start, the junior from New Jersey. He's an excellent runner, whether it's design running plays or scrambles. Where he's had issues this season is in the passing game. He's less than 50% completions, and in the last three games, he's a mere 45% with four picks. Coach Brian Kelly blames some mechanical issues in his delivery. And keep in mind, today he is without three top targets. We'll see if Wimbush can bounce back from two late season losses. Yeah, they'll be leaning a lot on Equinemia St. Brown here today. As LSU won the opening toss, deferring to the second half, Notre Dame will receive the kick. Connor Culp will kick off for the Tigers. Back deep, it's Michael Young and C.J. Sanders 
for Notre Dame. Isn't this awesome, partner? This is the start of what's going to be a fantastic football day. Yeah, we were able to call the last meeting between these two teams back in 2014. We get this one going and Rose Bowl and Sugar to come later on. Big day of college football here on ABC. We're going to ball out until we fall out today, and we are underway. And it'll come out to the 25 yard line. C.J. Sanders taking a knee. Let's meet running back Josh Adams. In the game, when the ball is snapped, there's no time to think, just react. You can't be wrong with the ball in your hand. There's no taking easy way out. Nobody said there was an easy way when my mom was working two jobs to get me and my brother and sister through school. I'm not taking the easy way out. Josh Adams told us prior to the game that he was going to be taking thoughts of a lot of his family members onto the field here today. Ran for almost 1,400 yards and approaching a school record. More than half of those yards after contact. They run over a few guys. Wimbush going to sling it on the first play. Close and caught. Boy, you talk about surprising LSU on the first play. Equinemius St. Brown with a catch. Well, and remember, Quinn told you that they're missing a couple of key receivers. So everyone is focused on St. Brown. And all he does is make a big catch to start. And they're going to throw it again. Downfield incomplete this time. At the 12-yard line, Miles Boykin got in behind Delpit. And they come out slinging it right on two straight passes. Well, listen, if you play LSU, you know you're going to get man coverage. And if you can't beat man coverage, you can't beat LSU. And St. Brown gets wide open. He's our leading receiver. 32 receptions now on the season after that one. Wimbush hands it off this time to Adams between the tackles. Just shy of the 35-yard line, Richard Lawrence making the stop on the play. He picked up four. Third down and about six to go for Notre Dame on this their opening possession of the ball game. Notre Dame coming up with a nine and rec nine and three record. LSU also at nine and three. This LSU defense missing a few key players, especially Arden Key, the potential All-American. Wimbush fires. It's complete, but it looks like it's going to be short of the first down, a gain of five to Durham Smythe, the tight end. Did you see some hesitation out there like some of the players? Oh, they're going to go for it on fourth down here. Sure are lining up quickly. Adam Stone right away, nowhere to go. And the Tigers make the game's first indelible statement. Devin White with the stop on Adams. Or right, Jonesy, you mentioned that there's no Arden Key. There's also no Donnie Alexander, no Corey Thompson at linebacker for LSU. Just a lot of freshmen. And then this sophomore, Devin White, who makes the big fourth down stop. A loss of three, and LSU taking over on first down now. Big play by White. He's their leader amongst the linebackers. A very talented group, albeit a little bit depleted, Rod, as you mentioned. Darius Geist in the backfield. He's the lone back on first down and 10 from the 34. Gage in motion. Edwin going to try and answer with a pass of his own. And nowhere to catch that for D.J. Chark. Manley Etling, the starting quarterback, completing 60% of his passes on the season. 14 touchdown passes versus just two interceptions. And towards the end of the year, got it going a little bit. There's the stats. He grew up, ironically, an Irish fan. Still has ticket stubs from when his parents took him to games as a kid. Hey, his family is all about Notre Dame. His mother, her siblings, his grandfather. Well, mom's on his side today, though. <laughs> Second down and ten. There's Geis. And Geis out to the 39-yard line. Well, folks, we dig deep here on New Year's. Here's a look at Danny Etling in his Notre Dame sweater rod. Well, we showed him that picture yesterday. You know what he said? I was cute. I was cute. I was a cute kid. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, Bomb there in the purple hat, changing colors for today. Legend Etling and Danny telling us also he still has an old Joe Montana throwback jersey from Joe's Irish days in his closet. Etling completes it at the 47 yard line to Russell Gage, who's one of the better stories this year for LSU. First down and 10. Yeah, and, and Etling has really done a nice job. He's really cut down on interceptions this year. He's been healthy, you know, for the first time. He was not healthy last season. And when you have a guy coming across the middle, you want to keep him out of harm's way. And that ball down low protects the receiver. Danny Etling coming off his best game of the season several weeks ago against Texas A&M. Threw for 347 yards in that win. Completes this one to the near side of the field. That's Stephon Sullivan, his 10th catch of the season. Picks up 11 yards and another LSU first down run. You know, Jonesy, we've had some rain here, and, and everyone kind of assumes when you have rain, you can't throw the ball. That's not true. Rain is worse on the defense because you can't get a pass rush. It's tough for defensive backs because you can't play on the heel, on the toes, and the side of your shoes. You have to be flat-footed. Not so much for the offense. They just play. You can keep the ball dry. Started sprinkling prior to the game. Here's Dice. A little draw play. Guy stopped up by Jalen Elliott and Greer Martini. Darius Geis was questionable as Quint talked about a little bit earlier coming into the game. But head coach Ed Ordron prior to the bowl game said, hey, take a few days off. Take a week off. Get yourself healthy. He was banged up in the early part of the season. Third game of the year against Mississippi State prior to that had an injury in early season camp. And right now is as healthy as he's been in a long time. Well, he said he played in pain all season. Etling going to keep it. And Etling inside the 30-yard line. Rod, we talked about Etling and his running skills last well, uh, yesterday. Yeah, he played against Notre Dame in 2014 when he was at Purdue before he transferred over here. And I went back and, you know, we looked at that stuff. And he ran a lot of zone read. And we asked him, are you going to run the ball against him? He said, I've been lobbying the coaches all season. you got to show off my skills. Well, you got to show offensive coordinator Matt Canada what he can do with his feet. Third down and four. Daryl Williams now in a tailback. Subbing in for Darius Dice. They're going to blow this one dead. A flag down on the play. Looks like we're going to have procedure against LSU. A false start by number 77 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still third down. Cooper Castleberry, part of a Big 12 officiating crew we have here today. Just underway. Rod, what do you make of the pace of the game so far? It's moving pretty quickly, huh? A little frantic, and, and also both these teams really are, are ground-oriented teams, and they've both come out slinging it around. So that, that accounts for a little bit of this being a, a hectic pace. And Orgeron's team winning six of the last seven games down the stretch. Third and nine here. Etling incomplete behind his receiver, Sullivan, almost picked off by Julian Love. So fourth down coming up a good pressure by Notre Dame and man coverage on the back end they forced Etling to to make that throw a little bit sooner than he wanted a little bit off balance a little bit inaccurate and they're going to punt it from midfield Josh Groudon into the ball game number 38 right there in a good part of the field for a gimmick or trick play Are, have you noticed We've seen more trick plays during this bowl season. It's like everyone's decided I'm yeah. going to get my trick plays in. <laughs> We're waiting watching. on ours. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome back, everyone, to the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's. Part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Fourth down coming up for the Tigers. Broden at midfield. For LSU, Fink standing on his own 10-yard line. And a great pooch punt that's going to be downed at the three-yard line by Russell Gage. As we take a look at our Franklin American Mortgage keys to the game. Well, there are a couple things that jump out at you. Wimbush 
can help the offense by running him an awful lot, it, it, particularly if he's struggling with the passing game. But St. Brown really needs to be elite, and he made an elite catch because they've got two receivers out. Guys, do your normal thing. Get 100 yards. But they've got to find explosive plays, LSU, and Chark is the guy who has a chance to give that to LSU. Those are the things we're looking at. Yeah, and, uh, boy, Rod, you got to like the start that Brandon Wimbush got off to, at least in that first series passing, right? Uh, that'll help his confidence, but right now they're backed up, and I don't think they're going to want to throw it from the end zone. Here. First down and 10 from the three. Josh Adams in the shadows of his own goalposts. Out of the four yard line, Delpit making the stop for the Tigers. Brandon Wimbush passed for almost 1,900 yards this year. Former four star prospect from St. Peter's High School in New Jersey. Won a state title coming out of high school. It wasn't that long ago, a year ago, he was on the scout team, so he has made a meteoric ascension to where he is right now. On second and eight, going to run it into the boundary. Got drilled at the 10 yard line, setting up a third down and short, picking up six as we go down to Quint. Not surprising, Notre Dame relying on that left side of their line guard, Quentin Nelson, 56, first team All American, and left tackle Mike Le McGlinchey, gigantic, 6'8, 315, back to back plays when they were backed up to that left side. Both All Americans, both potential first round draft choices. I think they're, they're locks as first round picks. <laughs> Wimbush hands it off. Adams. Boy, it's going to be close. Let's see where they spot it. You see our yellow line there. That is merely an approximation of where the first down mark is. They give it to Adams, who was stoned on fourth down on the previous series. They're going to give him the first down. And Notre Dame with their second one of the ball game. Their second possession. Here in the first quarter. Brian Quitt, Kelly quick to tell us that Winbush is a much improved quarterback over the last three weeks during practice. Adams takes the toss. And Rod, we saw some of that yards after contact you alluded to there. Yeah, and that's going to help Winbush as much as anything, running behind those two first round picks, likely on that left side and, and having his guy Josh Adams reel off a first down or or so. But you know, you saw the note on the scout team. Wimbush really should have been backing up Deshaun Kaiser this year in Notre Dame. He played a year before he should have been out there. Still maturing then as a quarterback. Tosses it to Tony Jones Jr. And where have you seen, or where do you figure his biggest area of growth is going to be? Well, it's, it's really fundamentals. I mean, everybody expected Kaiser to come back. Instead, he declared for the draft. He's with the Cleveland Browns. That forced Wimbush into action. And he just hasn't had the reps, you know, for balance and accuracy and getting your arm in the right position. Keeps it on the lead option. Great move for first down. Still on the loose. Wimbush with a nice run. A missed tackle by Delpit, and Notre Dame moving the chains again into LSU territory. Oh, he is talented. Watch this. You know, you get a good block down in the middle. He finds the hole, and then he just jukes the heck out of one safety. That's Grant uh, Delpit that he just left some ankles broken over there. Ball at the 46-yard line, a 31-yard run by Brandon Wimbush, who, by the way, is Notre Dame's second leading rusher. Behind Josh Adams. Coming in motion. Look for the double pass here. Throwing it back to Jones. And Arnold's intercepted at the 15. That was well read by the secondary. And Chase on broke it up. Well, you want to run your trick play before the other guy does. <laughs> As we've seen during this bowl season, a number of trick plays in the first quarter for that reason. And here's your double pass. Cole Cummett, a little bit under front. That's why he's playing tight end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bridge, bridge. Josh Adams back in the ball game on second and ten. Winbush keeps it again. Brought down for little or no gain on the play, setting up a third down and long now for Notre Dame. Tackle made by Michael Divinity Jr. We talked about those linebackers. Arden Key, Donnie Alexander missing 
as now we have a new quarterback in the ball game for Notre Dame. Ian Book comes in, taking the snap instead of Wimbush. And this was part of the Notre Dame plan to get him in the game. You know, he's a he's a more accomplished pocket passer than Wimbush. And so in these situations, they want to get him in here and find out what he can do. Interesting spot to bring him in here on third and long. A little receiver screen, almost intercepted by Kalevon Chasen, intended for St. Brown and fourth down coming up as a result for Notre Dame. Yeah, Ian Book through that pass. He actually started a game this year earlier against North Carolina. Looked to be a little bit high, Rod. Yeah, you know, he, he's been on that sideline. It's a little wet, a little cold. Probably didn't get as many warm ups as he'd like, and he pops in and a little bit high with that one. Now, Notre Dame's got to be careful here because DJ Chark back to DJ get this punt right there. Number the eight has two punt returns for touchdowns this year. His best and longest being a 75 yard punt return earlier this year against Auburn. He's going to field it inside the 10 and dropped immediately at the three by Julian Love. Great coverage on that 45 yard punt. And you have to wonder about Chark's discretion there to field it inside the 10. Wonder about it? <laughs> There's no question. You can't catch that ball. The DJ had the wrong tune on that time. Back after this. Enjoy. The Citrus Bowl on ABC, presented by Overton's. Overton's, America's marine and water sports superstore. In part by the 2018 Ford F-150, it doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. And Franklin American Mortgage, it all begins with home. Man, it's been a great week of activities. Players getting involved with the community, the kids. A lot of fun to be had. And players, uh, they did pretty well on a couple of the shopping sprees they got as we go downstairs to quit. Mark, our fans at home may have noticed uh, some water, some precip precipitation on the lens. Uh, right now it is raining gently. The wind is whipping pretty good, though, more than 10 miles an hour left to right. Temperature in the low 50s. So when that wind's kicking in, some of these fans from down south, a little chilly, as am I. I feel like I need gloves and a hat today in Orlando. I spoke to a few LSU fans. They said it was 20 degrees back in Baton Rouge. But guys ready to heat it up on the field. Great straight arm, and Dice with a first down at the 34-yard line. He told Jalen Elliott, you better talk to the hand because my feet aren't listening. Well, we talked about him being an angry runner. When you saw the quickness, watch the anger right now. You just get out of my way. I don't have time for this. <laughs> He's got powerful legs, and that man now has more than 3,000 yards career rushing at LSU. Yeah, just the fifth player in school history to rush for 3,000 or more and the meter still running he gets great respect from San Juan Barkley Ronald Jones those backs watch each other Etling gonna pass out of the backfield incomplete dangerously intended for Russell Gage as we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Lexus. Yeah, and these are some star players that we expected to make a difference in what should be a defensive struggle. Geist, you've seen him do his thing. You've seen Adams do his thing. Chark is the, the pass receiving threat deep down the field, as is St. Brown. And Brown made his presence felt on the very first play. But these are guys that can really make a difference here in what should be a defensive struggle with some big plays. Well, Darrell Williams now in a tailback, takes the handoff. Williams going to be stopped for a gain of about one. Williams actually one of two winners of their MVP award. An important part of what they do at LSU, Martini making the stop on the play. They give a bunch of carries to Darrell Williams. It's not just Geis in the backfield. Guys getting a breather right now. Well, at first it looked like he was getting some uh, equipment, uh, but then he started taking his gloves off. You know, the helmet thing is one thing, and I guess he's tying his shoe or something over there, so with that helmet, get him back in, right? Yeah, there was some question as to whether he would play it all today. Of course, we have seen at times players with NFL prospects, especially first-rounders, not elect to play. Etling 
steps out of bounds at about the 38 yard line but overall a, a great for football fans to be able to see Darius Geis play here today well Geis made it clear you know once he started practicing that he was going to play in this game mm -hmm. here's a look at the call offside by number 42 of the defense it's a five yard penalty and still third Geis uh, looking at his equipment there on the sidelines Josh Rosen of course not playing for UCLA there's some guys in the past uh, McCaffrey last year elected not to play in Stanford's bowl game Leonard Fournette as well it is a debate with a lot of different variables involved on third down and four coming up Etling incomplete behind his intended receiver Daryl Williams and it's fourth down coming up and we have the players shaken up down in the field that's number 77 Brandon Charles check that Sadiq Charles yeah he's he's the left tackle he's one of the two true freshman linemen that's played an awful lot for LSU this season and one of the guys that they're counting on they really like where they think this offensive line will be next season 437 to go we're going to take a break and come back on the other side Well, tonight it's the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. First up at five, number two, Oklahoma, number three, Georgia, kicking things off in the college football playoff at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Then at 845, number one, Clemson, number four, Alabama, in the college football playoff of the All-State Sugar Bowl, fumble snap. Both games on the app as well. Von Rosenberg got the punt off and... Uh, Things ended up pretty well for LSU when all was said and done after well, the bobbled snap. He, he didn't panic. You know, he, he knew he had a little time. He had to hurry, but he didn't rush. Look at that. No panic. Let me get there. Take a peek. I'm all right. A lot of guys just lose their composure once you drop a ball, but you, you, you can't do that. And he was quite good about that. It was interesting when we were meeting yesterday. We asked you about that expression, hurry but don't rush. And you use this kind of scenario as the perfect example of it. Yeah, you, you don't want to <laughs> ignore, you know, your basics about what you're supposed to do. You want to go through that process and not just, you know, freak out. First down and 10 for the Irish from their own 13. Wimbush eluded a little bit of heat. Great recovery on that pass breakup by Jacob Phillips. That's when it appeared that Wimbush had a man open. Well, and Phillips is one of those young linebackers. He's a freshman, you know, stepping in to help out for Donnie Alexander not being there. He's from East Nashville High School. Yeah, in Tennessee. And he had a, a nice effort here to get back and get that left paw up. It's a good play. Second down and 10. And whistles down on the field. It's going to be procedure against Notre Dame. A false start by number 72 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second. We asked Brian Kelly about his season, looking for their 10th win here. Asked him about the tipping point. He said, Mark, it wasn't really a tipping point. We struggled down the stretch. We ran out of gas a little bit. Kind of started with that Miami game. And a 10th win means a lot to them here today as Adams takes it for a gain of about two. Frank Heron making the tackle on the play, but... Notre Dame has played a treacherous schedule run. When yeah. you look at this being their seventh top 25 opponent. Yeah. You know, remember, they were in the hunt for the playoff until they got to November, and they finally wore down. You know, and, and Miami got them, Stanford got them, but there was a beat up. That's John Adams. That's a beat up team. Third and 13. Wimbush given time. High and behind St. Brown, fourth down coming up. Well, it's a problem that he's had most of the season with the ball sailing on him. You know, we've talked about his, his fundamentals, and Brian Kelly's talked about it, saying that's one thing we got to work on, that sometimes the elbow is too low, which leads to a high pass. Sometimes his feet 
are too close together. He's not really balanced. But that's just repetition. And you have to remember, he wasn't a starting quarterback until his junior year of high school. A lot of people do it way before then, so he's got reps that he needs to have. Well, he started off hot. There's the punt from Newsom. Chark is going to have a chance this time. Fumbles it. Loose ball. Still loose, and LSU with a great chance to recover. Looks like the Tigers got it back. So after fielding it inside the five last time, Chark this time coughs it up. Tory Carter making the recovery that time for LSU and uh, Chark having a rough day. Well, special teams have been an issue. He whiffed on that one. I mean, he didn't drop or muff that the one. He didn't get close enough to it. And recovered by the receiving team. First down. And Torrey Carter, after Notre Dame had a fantastic chance to get it. And good news for LSU here as uh, Darius Geis comes back on the field. Uh, they apparently found the right gloves for him. At first, it was like, ruh row. <laughs> he's equipment managers like, I don't have gloves for him. He's not, he's not happy with me. <laughs> now they found the right gloves. Doing most of his work with his feet. And now his hands across midfield down to the 49-yard line. Uh, uh, Rod, uh, you, you played. Are, are running backs a little finicky about their gloves? Is well, that what it is? You like what you like, and you like what makes you comfortable. And he's looking at this, and he's going, wait a minute. Uh -uh. I, I want the white gloves. I want the things I started with. And if you're the equipment manager, you, you don't want the star player coming over going, you need to get this right, man. That's a different kind of pressure. <laughs> Second and five. He used those gloves for a great stiff arm. It's Notre Dame DP a few runs ago. Here he is again. Picks up about four yards on the play. Q, what, what's with the glove gate down there? Well, they took the original gloves and actually put them into a chest behind their bench as if, as if to put them in storage. So it wasn't like they're defective. But then you talk about speed. That equipment manager, I'm saying sub 4-4 to the locker room and back. He may be involved in LSU's pro day is how fast he was getting that new pair of gloves out of the locker room and onto Darius's hands. Uh, hey, man, you got to keep the star player. And Geis a little little tight today, man, a little heated as uh, he, he pushes Conio out of his face. He's all competitive. When he's on the field, he's all in. Play action. Edling incomplete intended for Carter. And I was happy to see that the officials did not throw the flag against Geis or Coney for that little confrontation that they had. Because we watched that Kentucky game, and that call that the official made kicking that player out of the game, yeah, yeah. Benny Snell was as ridiculous look, as it comes. I I'm with you. And I talked to the officials before the game, and they said, look, little leeway because it's an emotional game. We know this big program, you know, coaches, players like it. We'll tell him. A little leeway, but not too much. End over and punt down to the 10-yard line by Groudon. A 36-yard punt. Fink feels it cleanly and calls for the fair catch. Well, wild card weekend beginning Saturday, 420 Eastern time with an AFC tilt between the Titans and Chiefs from Arrowhead on ABC and ESPN, also available on the ESPN app. Notre Dame with the ball first down and 10. Brandon Wimbush struggling on that last three and out. Quint? And both teams actually struggling through the air. Notre Dame playing without two key receivers and a tight end that account for 67 receptions. And we've seen them after that first completion really struggle through the air, Rod. Where does offense via the passing game have to come from? Well, someone has to step up and help out, but St. Brown has to be elite. And, you know, if you're an elite receiver, you've got to beat man coverage. So a lot of pressure on him today. Wimbush going to hand it off this time. This time, one of the few times that they run over the right side of that offensive line over Smythe and Kramer, pardon me, Kramer and Bars and not McGlinchey and Nelson. Well, Alexander making the tackle. Yeah, and that left side is rare. I, I can only think of one other time in the last, you know, 10, 15 years you've seen two first-round picks mm. on the same line. And Alabama had that back in 2013 with Wormack and Fluker. Ed Orgeron of LSU said he can't take his eyes off those two guys as Adams tripped up and stopped back at the five-yard line. The Irish 
going the wrong way a loss of six on the play it sets up a third down and 15. You know keep in mind that this is an LSU defense operating with a couple of freshmen stepping in at the linebacker spot. They've got three guys who started out and they're just as as aggressive. And Dave Aranda their D coordinator has basically said well these guys are talented. They can make plays. Just not sure they're always going to the right place. Third and 15. Wimbush over the middle completes it. Good catch by St. Brown. But he's going to be stopped up about three yards short of that first down marker, a gain of 12 on the play. And that might be the last play of the first quarter here in Orlando. At the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton. The 72nd chapter of this bowl game. And the 12th meeting all time between Notre Dame and LSU. Wimbush trying to get back in rhythm after that nice start on the first series of the ball game. And that's the first 15 minutes in the books. The Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back, everyone, to the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's on ABC, part of Capital One Bowl Mania here from Camping World Stadium in the heart of Orlando, Florida. Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore on New Year's Day. Rod, we talked about motivation, the future, <laughs> very bright for 2018 for yeah. both these teams. Uh, what do you make of the way they've come out? That's a good look it on you, It beats the pal. lampshade on our head from It's last a good night. look. <laughs> no, but you can tell. It, it, these teams are motivated. There's emotions have been running high. It's been a little chippy out there. We've had uh, glove gate. Yes. Chark has missed. The mark a couple of times on punts. Let's go downstairs to Quinn for a story with the Irish. Yeah, linebacker Niles Morgan, uh, senior, one of their leading tacklers, apparently has been stripped of his captaincy according to a Notre Dame release. Uh, he's not wearing the C on his jersey. He did not appear at, at, at the logo during the coin toss. It is an internal matter, but Niles Morgan, not the captain, not one of the captains today for the Fighting Irish. Hey, Quinn, how much uh, do you think this is related to something during the bowl prep bowl season? Because Kelly told us that he suspended guys for making bad decisions. Could be related? It, it must be, but but we, we have no official word other than it being an internal matter. Yeah, no mention coming when we were meeting with them. This is Gage on the reverse. He's their jet sweep and reverse guy, and he picks up the first down at midfield. Jalen Elliott making the stop on the play. Gage has been one of the great stories this year, Rod. Look, and this is one of the, the, the bread and butter pieces of this offense, the jet sweep. And if you don't set the edge against LSU, you're going to have receivers getting the ball, getting to the edge, and hurting you big time. That's, that's the one big difference that you notice when you put on the LSU tape and watch your offense this year. Darrell Williams in the backfield. Geis on the sidelines right now. Dylan in motion. And the throw back to the tight end to Foster Morrow. Morrow picks up the first down and makes it to the 35. And they move the chains again. A gain of 14. Watkins making the stop on the play. And offensive coordinator Matt Canada pressing some good buttons right now. Yeah, and it may be the last time he presses some buttons for LSU. A lot of reports uh, out there publicly about uh, Coach O and Matt Cannon not getting along and supposedly discussing his exit following the game. No official word, and neither party will say anything about it one way or the other. So Georgia on telling us their focus has been on beating Notre Dame that singularly and only that. And that was Darrell Williams picking up five on the play. And this is Canada's first year on the job. Well, keep in mind, it's his first year. He's the guy that Coach Orgeron selected. They gave him a big contract, three years, $4.5 And all the reports out there now are that they're talking about a buyout arrangement for his exit following the game. But again, neither Canada nor Coach Orgeron would address it with us yesterday when we met with him. You see they started the season three and two, a disappointing loss to Troy, and then a big bounce back. Here's the middle screen, complete to Terrell Williams, and Williams 
Looks like he picks up another first down, or at least close to it, as they spot the ball right a little bit short of the line. So here's my concern if Canada leads. You're changing your offense again. And remember, they fired Les Miles because they said, oh, the offense, you know, you can't figure it out. We're going to go another way. Well, their productivity on offense has been about the same as it was last year. Now, they're different looking with the motions and the shift and whatnot, but the production has been about the same. Same scoring, same rushing, mm. that sort of thing. Bryce comes back in the ball game, but Edlin keeps it himself. Running right up the middle behind the center, Ed Ingram picks up four for the first down. At some point offensively, you need to have a, a system that gives you an identity that okay. you can hang your hat on, that the players buy into, they know what they're going to do, and, and you really, you have an identity. They don't have that right now, particularly if there is a change that in fact occurs following this game. Yeah, Canada, one of the highest paid offensive coordinators in the country. Darrell Williams in a tailback. And Williams over the left side, pardon me, right side of that line. Picks up about four inside the 20. Quint. LSU left tackle Sadiq Charles no longer on the sideline out with an apparent shoulder injury. And one thing we've seen on this drive is occasionally you'll see the tackles actually go in motion and flip-flop. 63 Weathersby moving from left to right on occasion during this drive. But this is a shorthanded line late in the season. They started two freshmen, and now they got some injury issues with Sadiq Charles. Yeah, 63 right there in the offensive line. That is K.J. Malone, Hall of Famer Paul Malone from the NBA's son. Second down and seven. Edwin got down safely. Picks up about three on the play. Yeah, Quint mentioned that shorthanded line, but the shifting and the motion that they use, trading places on the offensive line, what that does is that makes the defense think, and it also makes them recount your numbers and your gaps, where you're supposed to be. And sometimes you have a defender who has to move over and play a different gap because now there are two extra blockers over there, and he may get to the wrong gap. So they look for those things, and they test them every play. They come out, they chef, they move, and they're making the defense think about where they need to be. Creating a little uncertainty, yeah. huh? Dice and Williams in the game. Entling into a tight window. The catch made of the nine by Foster Morrow. And it's first and goal for the Tigers, an eight-yard game. You know, Jonesy, uh, Edwin told us that his grandfather is a huge Notre Dame fan. Mm, He's mm. got all the Notre Dame swag up in the house and mm, whatnot. Mm, mm. And he said, Gramps, you, you <laughs> got to lose that stuff, you know, on January 1st. And he said, yeah, 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 that, no problem. I'm going to take it all down. I'm, hey, I'm all about the Tigers. <laughs> but it's all going right back up after the game. Danny's going to let him know about it after this. Williams, the lone back. A whistle down on the field. The previous play is under further review. They're going to take a look at that last catch by Foster Morrow at the nine yard line, which made it first down and goal. But yeah, back to Etling. Five years, four coaches that he's played for, a couple of schools he's attended. Today, the end game, collegiately at least, for Danny Etling. Let's take one more look at that pass that he threw and the catch or no catch. Uh, it's the biggest uh, thing that folks talk about in football outside of targeting is yeah. what is the catch that nobody seems to know anymore. Uh, but again, here, if you're going to the ground, you've got to retain possession and the ground can't help you make the catch. If it touches the ground, that doesn't disqualify a catch if you have control over it. And from that angle, it looked to me like he's got an arm underneath the ball and a hand underneath the ball. And I'm certainly not seeing a clear picture that says the ball hit the ground yeah. and he didn't make the catch. And remember, it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. You know, sometimes, Rod, it seems like slow motion, and you've talked about it often After this year. Review, Here's the call. The ruling on the field stands. Sometimes slow motion distorts it to the point where it looks different from what it really is. Well, I'm not going to take all the credit for it. There was a study done at the University of Chicago, and they first they did it with jury trials to figure out, hey, do, do jurors really see more intent when you slow things down? And they said, yeah, you do. Then they started looking at replays for football, and they said, you know what? You, do, you got the same thing. It looks different. You think something's really happening, and it really isn't. 
First down and goal for LSU. They hand it off to Williams. Still going and stopped finally at the two yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Earl Williams has nine rushing touchdowns this year. Yeah, this is a, a great, great look at this. A stretch play. Watch him feel it and find a couple of holes there he chooses from and a nice cutback. But you stretch out that defensive line and you give that back the freedom to pick the hole he likes as we see Geis standing by, anxious to get back in. He's all, he's got the helmet and the gloves. The gloves are good. He's ready to go now. As long as the gloves are right, he and Williams really tight. Got a great bond as teammates. Complimenting each other. Williams stopped up short of the first down by a couple of feet by Morgan and Jameer Jones. So third and goal now for LSU. Well, and you know, guys and others, they want Williams to score. I mean, Williams was a big time high school running back, but guess who was the bigger high school running back across the river? Yeah. Leonard Fournette. Yeah. And then he comes to LSU, plays behind Fournette, thinks that, well, he'll be the next guy. Geis passes him by, and so he's been playing, you know, the second fiddle all this time, and this might be his opportunity to get into the end zone. Well, Geis comes into the ball game. Williams in motion. Etling keeps it. No signal, and he's going to be stopped up short. It'll be fourth down and goal for the Tigers. Well, you got to go, right? Yes. And that's You're with an inches X. Inches away. Go with an X. <laughs> Decision time for Red Orger. Ruling on the field was short at the goal line. Fourth down. Well, there's there's the ball. Right there. Never broke the plane. That's that's a big pile of humanity down there. I'm not sure how they spot that. It is nearly impossible, Rod. We've talked about it. All the technology that We've got out there and you can watch your you can watch games on phones and do live FaceTime and all that and the art of marking a football is still largely somewhat random. Look I, I know you've got one of those little things in your house where it talks to you yeah. you know tells you about the weather and the yeah. news and yeah. music and whatnot. You can't tell me you can't put a chip in a football and have it tell you that's a first down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. There's got to be a company out there working on that right now. But for now, we'll do it the imperfect way. And if Danny. they're looking for investors, Mark Jones, <laughs> that's at Mark Jones. Yeah. Here's how it sounded as we listen for a whistle. Uh, you can hear the whistle, and that whistle was well before there yeah. was any extra progress towards that goal line and Edling had been consumed by the pile of Notre Dame tacklers so you could even barely see him now you know you can push your ball carrier from behind to kind of help him get in so you got guys back there why not just take a big lineman yeah you know and put him back there and have him by design yeah and have him push you well they're still taking a look at this Let's bring in Walt Anderson, our rules official, who is uh, nearby as we After first get the review, call. The ruling on the field of being short of the goal line stands. It's fourth down. Yes. What would he make? Well, they're obviously looking at several things. They want to make sure that whenever their quarterback lunged forward, that the ball didn't penetrate the plane of the goal, which it didn't. But you're right. There's really not a clear view to change anything. Now, were they also looking at uh, exactly where the spot is and the clock or anything like that? Because that took a while. They really won't do anything with the clock because they're going to wind the clock here yeah. after the referee blows it ready. Here we go, fourth down and goal. Williams in the backfield. Carter, the fullback, lined up beside him. Out of the offset eye. Oh, they had a motion up Yeah. Front. No, it was a false start on number 44 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. And in comes the field goal unit. Yeah, that was that was Tony Carter. You know, he was in a three-point stance, and then he tried to fake the four-point stance when he moved, as if hey, I'm here. There it is. And he tried to freeze in there, couldn't hold it. 
clearly they were going to yeah. run behind Carter there. That seemed to be the plan. Instead, Connor Cole Ferguson coming in to attempt this field goal. Chip shot. He's 11 of 15 on the season. This one from 22. And he missed it to the right. Two blown opportunities for the Tigers. Did you see the smile on Brian Kelly's face? We talked about motivation. I mean, these two teams, these coaches, these players are completely into it. It's been a defensive struggle. We've had some big plays, but it's been chippy out there. It's been really emotional. Trying to finish off the season on a positive note. Notre Dame had their little leprechaun pushing that one off to the right. We'll be back right after this. With your studio update brought to you by Royal Caribbean Chick-fil-A, Peach Bowl, unbeaten UCF, and Auburn. Mackenzie Milton escapes the pressure and hops in for the 18-yard score to put the Knights up 10-3. This game over on ESPN. Mark, Rod, Happy New Year. Back to you guys. Happy New Year to you. Happy That's New Year. Over. Zeros on the board here with 7.45 to go in the first half. LSU missing a field goal opportunity from close in a moment ago. Irish first and 10 from the 20. Little three flip there. Winbush downfield into coverage. There was some contact, but no flag on the play intended for Miles Boykin. Well, you're not going to get the ticky tack call when you're not clearly, you know, open here. I mean, you see the play action here. Now watch the single coverage and then to get the help over the top from the safety. And this ball is underthrown a bit, so not an issue. You don't get you don't get past interference on anything right. like that. Took another deep shot. But I'm struck by the fact that both these teams are trying to get big plays because they know the defense is really kind of you know, going to handle the day. Remember, she's going to have to hit a couple of those, keep the defense honest. That one tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. And a couple of quick plays, it's third down and 10 for Notre Dame. You know, we talk about the defense kind of handling the day. What about Adams? You know, yeah. this is a guy who had about 1,400 yards rushing this season. Only eight carries so far, only 13 yards. And again, this is, this is a defense that is missing three starting linebackers. And he's on the sideline right now. Tony Jones in the ball game for him. To the left of Wimbush. Wimbush going to keep it himself. And nowhere to go. Might have gotten a yard on the play. Fourth down coming up. Another three and out for the Irish. Devin White, number 40, right there. He is the catalyst right now defensively for LSU. All SEC first team, second team All American. He was awarded the team MVP award on defense. Look, he called out the team after they lost to Troy. And that was one of the biggest upsets of the season and he's like that's not good enough he uh, had a what did he call he said it was the, the come, to, come jesus to jesus meeting moment. with his teammates <laughs> and after that they all fell in line ended up winning six of the last seven coming down the stretch their only loss was against alabama on fourth down tyler newsome with the punt but dj chark is having a tough day another fumble he fumbled now two we, of them today. We know. We know he had curfew. Yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't celebrating last night. No. Yeah, DJ got to change the channel on that punt return. And Citrus Bowl on ABC, presented by Overton's, is brought to you by Pacific Light. Experience the power of Pacific. And Jaguar, the art of performance. I'll tell you the bowl activities included go karting, an arcade visit, bowling. Good time for everybody. Look at that reaction time by the big bowl. So far, zeros on the scoreboard, though. 6.43 to go. Most exciting 0 0 <laughs> first half I've seen. Been a lot, right? Yeah. Darius Geis, the lone back. Play action, Entling under heat, and going to be sacked at the 28-7. Niles Morgan, one of the first ones to get there. Morgan 
joined by Tillery. Yeah, watch the right side. Just a little bit of an overload. Morgan on a blitz gets in there. And, you know, this is an offensive line. We talked about having some, some issues. You, know, you saw Charles come out. K.J. Malone is in over there on that side. And they've, they've had another lineman struggling a little bit. You know, Brumfield, the left guard. So he might be a little under the weather. Second and 16. Little receiver screen complete to Russell Gage. And well read by that Irish defense. Stopped after a gain of about one. Sets up third and long for Etling and the Tigers. Yeah, that, that defense is playing lights out right now. Tranquil getting involved there. But it's really been Coney who's kind of led this defense today. He's, he's already got seven tackles. Four solo tackles. And it was Coney we saw go face mask to face mask a little bit earlier with Geis. Third down and 15 coming up. Little trips right formation. Oh, I expect to see zone coverage here. Edling on the move. Fires. And caught at the 41-yard line by D. Anderson. First down and a big gain by LSU of 31 yards. Well, Jalen Elliott, number 21, is playing back deep. Now, what he does is he comes up to take the short guy you want to stay as deep as you can. He doesn't stay deep. You see he's a little frustrated with himself at the end there. Sadiq Charles back in a tackle as Etling fires behind his receiver, Russell Gage. Gage yeah. a little upset. Yeah, not happy. You have to be careful with that stuff. You know, you didn't like the throw from the quarterback. Because <laughs> right. when you drop one, the quarterback gets to say, uh-huh. Right. Catch the ball. Yeah, we uh, talked about Russell Gage with... Coach Orgeron, and he said that Gage is everywhere. It's like we've got two of him. He's done a bunch of different great things for the team this year. And one of the nice surprising stories on the season for LSU. This is Geist trying to hit the edge and stop right at the line of scrimmage as we go downstairs to Quint for more on the glove gate. Yeah, the equipment staff has been working feverishly down here. We, we spoke about gloves. They're using three different models. Standard leather scuba. This is what you want to use when it gets really, really wet. And this is what Geiss has switched to. The gloves with the black palm. It's got like a sticky scuba surface. Man. Q breaking it down with different types of gloves. Stickum was back in the day. <laughs> so old school. <laughs> Well, can they protect Etling here? They've had trouble this series. Third and ten. To the wide side of the field, caught by Chark. And D.J. Chark, atoning for his miscues on special teams, picks up the first down. Sean Crawford with his deep, was the D.B. beat. Well, don't question Etling's toughness. Takes a big hit from Elliott, came on a safety blitz, stood in there and delivered it, and they got a first down inside the red zone now. D.J. Chark is uh, arguably their fastest receiver. Deep threat. Etling hands it off to Geis. And Geis brought down immediately. No gain on the play. Well, given the way that Notre Dame is handling the rushing attack right now, you, you sort of feel like down here, LSU's got to take some shots and take them to the corner. I mean, Etling is good at throwing the ball outside. Mm -hmm. And so you can move him out and give him a chance to, to find one of his guys. You know, Chark is 6'3". They also have Sullivan, who's 6'6". Use those guys. Use that advantage down here. Uh, D. Anderson, also 6'6". They run the reverse yeah. and nowhere to go. Yeah. Diagnosed and derailed by Drew Tranquil. He tackled Derek Dillon, who was the ball carrier on the play. Yeah, Mike Elko, the D coordinator, said, look, he's going to handle this jet sweep with his safeties. There are two ways to play it. You have your safeties set the edge, or you use a defensive end. And a defensive end is not athletic enough. Tranquil played that correctly, anticipated the jet sweep, and turned it back in, made the play. Ironically, Etling told us Tranquil right there was the guy he hosted on his visit when he was at Purdue. How about that? Yeah. Third and 18. Etling. Chark. And stopped immediately at around the 20-yard line 
by Julian Love setting up a fourth down with two and a half minutes to go. You have confidence in your kicking game? Not at this point. Let's go down to Quinn. Well, Connor Culp missed that earlier chip shot. He's missed four of his last five. So Coach O now making a change in field goal kickers. Jack Gonson, who's I got a two of five, perfect on extra points this year, gets a crack at it. His long is 24 on the season. And he's missed three of his last five, so he doesn't come in exactly red hot either. Oh well, we talked about lack of confidence. Oh boy. They're 0 for 2 on their field goal attempts from 22, that one from 37. What next, Coach George Ross? ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. Hey, Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. And we have a new quarterback in at Notre Dame again. Ian Book taking his second snap. He passed for an incompletion last time. This one goes to Adams. And Adams close to a first down. At the 29-yard line, Delpit making the stop on the play for the Tigers. Well, he's in to run that two-minute offense and a good start by throwing it to Adams to, to get nine yards. But can he run the two-minute drill? They didn't have the confidence that Wimbush did, and so Book is in there to do it. Book hands it off to Adams, and Adams picks up about six on the play. Notre Dame with three timeouts remaining. LSU with two. And, and Jonesy, keep in mind, Notre Dame three straight possessions went three and out and so now with the pickup and pace with the two minute drill here yeah they're moving the ball a little bit and they're getting a little bit of you know production right now from Adams nine rushes 19 yards Book with some good wheels got to the sidelines pushed out of bounds at the 35 Quint book is a pro style quarterback a sophomore out of California you mentioned he started that North Carolina game had two picks one in and one touchdown 17 to 31 inexperienced what he does well is throw on the run coach called him a gamer confident and an excellent communicator he throws strikes and sees the field while he might not have ideal arm strength he also threw a brutal pick six in the Miami loss yeah he's a young man from the Sacramento area in California was committed to Boise State Washington State and he's sacked back at the 25 by number 40 Devin White yeah, Devin White, White had some company along with Alexander Rod White was committed to getting him on the ground <laughs> yeah and a quick third down yeah but book was uh, a recruit that Washington State really wanted but when Notre Dame came calling changed his mind Got a timeout down to the field. 57 seconds to go in the first half. Be with you coming up on the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Final preps for both semifinal games. Boger McFarland and Tim Tebow will weigh in. Plus, we'll go to Pasadena. Can the dogs slow down that Sooner offense? We'll see at the half. Mark Rod. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. Happy New Year to you and yours. Take a look at our game track brought to you by Carmack. Some of the important numbers, not big bursting numbers on there. Yeah, you know, Geis got 31 of his 47 yards on one carry, and Adams held in check, and special teams have been yeah, yeah. Yeah. ugly. Book running, which is what he does well sometimes. Up ended, but got the first down to the 47 yard line. With 53 seconds to go, got to manage the clock here a little bit. Yeah, don't, don't get it twisted. He is a dual threat guy. He was a heck of a runner in high school, and he's been known as a little bit of a gunslinger around the Notre Dame campus. You know, with practice, he had that one start against North Carolina, had a tough moment against Miami coming in off the bench and throwing a pick six. But he is a pocket passer by day and a great runner by night. Yeah, showed it right there. And Brian Kelly talking it over on the sidelines with Chip Long, his offensive coordinator, mapping it out. When do we come back? Book back to pass on first and ten. 
Going to run again and stepped out of bounds about three yards short of the first down by Frank Heron. Yeah, he, he was trying to get the ball to St. Brown on a crossing route, and that was the only guy he looked at. And when he didn't see Brown come open, he had to tuck it down and take off. But it's going to be tough for Brown. He's getting a lot of attention out there by LSU. That's like getting six yards on that play, second and four. But fires complete at the 29-yard line to Miles Boykin, who they figured was going to be a bigger part of the game plan. And he cashes in there on the 18-yard catch. Yeah, that's a nice throw, too. A really nice throw. We, we've seen the skill set. You saw him take off and run. It looks like that's Dante Jackson down, getting uh, stretched out for typically that looks like a cramp. You know, it gets... Jackson was in man-to-man -man coverage on the receiver rod, and, and, and when he planted and, and accelerated, he cramped up. I don't know anything about that. Only fast guys have those problems. <laughs> Back after this, folks. <laughs> Hey, NBA Wednesday coming up on ESPN. Cavs and Celtics. Kyrie taking on LeBron. And then after that, it's the Thunder and the Lakers. Second half of the doubleheader. OKC starting to come on a little bit. And uh, boy, what a showdown that's going to be as uh, hey, LeBron goes on against the kid. Celtics <laughs> not, not quite ready for Cleveland yet. Uh, come on, you're with me on that, right? Yeah, we're going to find out. Celtics have cooled off after that fast start. Book heating up here, completes another pass out of the backfield. That was Josh Adams, 25 seconds to go. What's the thinking now, Rod, here? Well, you've got plenty of time to think about this. You've got a couple timeouts. You've got a quarterback who's kind of hot right now. As long as he takes care of the football, you know, you, you can take a shot, but you don't need to right now. You've got two timeouts. You can work the side and just don't give up the football and take a sack. So it's our game second and four. Throws off his back foot and launches it out of bounds. Yep. A, Wise decision, Bro Boykin, the closest receiver there. Yeah, and that works. You can take that shot as long as it's a safe throw, and it is. It's thrown to the corner. It's going to go out of bounds. Your guy gets it or it's out of play. Nothing to worry about. 18 seconds. You can still work inside if you think you have the confidence that a guy who hasn't played a lot can throw over the middle and recognize if they're in zone coverage. Well, he's uh, brought this offense to life a little bit here late in the first half. Book runs him forward to the 28-yard line. And you can't take a big nope. sack or else you're out of field goal range. Gilmore <laughs> making the tackle along with Notre Richard Dame Lawrence. Uh, that's just inexperience. 30 seconds. 30 second time out. You have a young guy who hasn't played an awful lot, and he's trying to make a play. Once he ducked the first guy, you got to throw the ball away and protect the yardage to have an attempt at a field goal. And Brian Kelly having a chat with him right there. Loss of six on the play, but still within field goal range for Justin Yoon, who's 12 of 16 on field goal attempts this year. Sure, and Kelly is talking to him about, you know, managing the situation. Hey, Ron, looking down the road a little bit, uh, do we have a decision as to whether Wimbush or Book comes out for the second half? Uh, I, I, I think that's a question. Mm. I think it's a question going into the spring. I, I, yeah. I think that quarterback spot is going to be kind of open for some competition to see which guy gets, gets better. There's Justin Yoon from 46 yards out. We've had th two missed field goals today and Notre Dame knocks their opportunity through to make it a 3-0 game as we get close to the end of the first half. Now 13 of 17 on the year. Yeah, it's been a, a spirited first half. Not a lot of scoring, obviously. Special teams have been an issue, particularly for LSU. But the, the emotion by the players out there, the, the spirit in which they've been playing with, it's been a little chippy at times, but hard hitting. We thought we'd get a defensive struggle with, uh, with big plays being the difference. Right. We've had some big plays but not enough to get into the end zone. Yeah, LSU has had a few great opportunities. They've had two, two missed field goals and uh, a penalty deep in the red zone, which uh, 
Could have gotten them a touchdown instead. 11 plays, 51 yards, Notre Dame with a 3-0 lead, courtesy of that guy, Justin Yoon. Clyde Edwards-Alaire back deep for the Tigers here. He's going to squib it down to the 35. And that's going to put a lid on the end of the first half. Jonathan Rucker has turned it. And it's three to nothing for the Irish. Book looked sharp on that final drive. And I, I think you're right. I think there will be some discussion at halftime for Notre Dame as to who starts the second half. Now, Wimbush ran it well. You know, Book gave you some running, and he threw the ball better. So, you got a question. Let's go downstairs to Quinn. Coach, uh, what impact did special teams have on that first half? Huge impact. You know, two field goals. Uh, you know, a couple of not not good decisions on the punt returner. Uh, but you know what? Our defense is playing great. It's only 3-0. We'll come back and have a great second half. How do you jumpstart the offense? You know, we'll get going. We'll get going. Give theirs the ball a little bit more. Get our running game going. Have complete confidence. We played great in the second half here. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Mark. All right, going to give it to Darius a little bit more. That's the prescription to fix their problems in the second half. 3 nothing at a break as we head to the studio for the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. Coming up right after these messages. Sadie's Benz Halftime Report. Usually on these halftime hits, they give us a highlight in the first half. Uh, we are saving you from that by showing you the outdoor <laughs> it's exterior right of the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. The Mercedes-Benz Superdome getting you ready for, of course, the All-State Sugar Bowl. Kevin Nagandi here, Tim Tebow, and Booger McFarlane. Behind us, you see and you hear the Clemson band. They got their game face on. They're ready to go for tonight's matchup featuring Clemson and Alabama. More on that in a moment, but when you're going Going into the half, it's a three-nothing game. Uh, the discussion <laughs> at quarterback here. Honestly, I, yes. I want to know where you want to go as an LSU guy when you watch that offense and then you see those two missed field goals. First of all, the kicking game has been a problem all year. That's number all one. Year. Number two, you've had three weeks to prepare, and this is the best you got? I guarantee you that's what fans at home are thinking. And I understand Coach O is very positive talking about second-half adjustments, but you can't help but wonder, all the Matt Canada rumors going around, is he going to stay, is he going to go? Is that affecting him as he calls plays? Because this LSU offense right now looks abysmal. I think it's I think it's fair to say I'm not an LSU guy. I think that's fair. But looking at it, you just, all those athletes, the running backs, the tight ends, the receivers, you gotta find a way to score some points and create yeah. big plays. There's too many great athletes, not good, great athletes to not score points. Yeah. Wimbush or Book? That was the discussion that Mark and Rod talked about after what you saw in that first half. Well, uh, he, Brian Kelly's going to pull the hook on somebody pretty quick, but I'll go with Cook. He, he got you a first down. and A first down? A couple of them. <laughs> That's what we're at right now. Yeah, what are we talking about? Those are the yeah. standards right now. I'm going with Wimbush. Dance with the girl you brought to the dance. That's okay, Wimbush. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what uh, Brian Kelly decides for we'll this Notre Dame offense. <laughs> By the way, they're up 3-0 uh, so far. Uh, as we talk about our game, we're not going to see – well, we hope that we're not just going to see field goals <laughs> right. in that first half. We expect a lot, as you see the, the band getting ready, of course, Clemson here. What are the game day preps? Tim, take us inside on a game like this. It's a semifinal. It feels like a national championship game. What's going through your mind as you get ready? You need to relax. It is so easy before a big game to get so anxious, so excited that you're drained by the time you actually come to the stadium. It happened to me. So a big thing for me was staying calm, listening to calm music, hanging with my friends, taking my mind off of the game. So when I show up, I'm relaxed, I'm free, I'm ready to go. The only thing I want to do was rest. Watch a movie, large stack of pancakes, some sausage about five hours before the game, and I was ready to go, baby. You got a carb what, load what before movie? a game like this. You don't have to carb load. On, Hashtag keto. Relax. Bad Santa. That, that, was, bad Santa was that my kind of movie. meal, you're going to relax? You're going to take a long nap, too? I need fuel for this machine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I need fuel. Yeah, it looks like that pancakes will slow down that speed that you got there, Booger. Hey, we're going to take you inside the locker rooms here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Clemson gearing up Alabama as well. After a loss, Nick Saban 10 and 2 in rematches the following season. You have nothing to prove, but some say you and your team don't belong here. I don't think one game defines who you are. 
So for the first time in a long time, there's something a little extra in the mix. Motivation. That's scary. Not for you, but for everyone else. This halftime report is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. The Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. New Year's Day in Pasadena. There's nothing quite like it. College football playoff semifinal, the Rose Bowl game, presented by Northwestern Mutual. Oklahoma and Georgia, both programs making their second appearances in Pasadena. Georgia, 75 years ago, came here for the first time, played UCLA, and won 9 to nothing. gave up only five first downs, a shutout, allowing five first downs. That is not likely to happen against Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma. Now, people say that the Sooners haven't seen anything like an SEC defense, but the fact is Oklahoma's won its last four against SEC opponents, three of them with Mayfield at quarterback. Have we faced an offense maybe as potent as these, as these guys? Maybe not, but we also are about rising up our level of play to their level. And I know our kids are really excited for that opportunity. But too many people don't run away from Oklahoma. But um, I see Baker Mayfield make a lot of people miss. We got the Heisman Trophy winner. We got the Buckets Award winner. Oklahoma is our defensive leader, our defensive heart, uh, inside linebacker. And he covers up a lot of mistakes. So, I mean, I love having him back there. We've played some talented teams, but for them as a whole defense, uh, probably the best unit we'll play. You can't miss number three when he's on the field. He's always around the ball. Great player. You know, sideline to sideline, he's going to make a lot of plays. I mean, they're really good. They're, they're as good as anybody defensively we've played. You know, they've got depth. They've got talent. Kirby and those guys are obviously, you know, as good as it gets. So, you know, they've stopped just about everybody they've played. There is Baker Mayfield's jersey, old number six. He said number six wasn't even his favorite number. They just sort of gave it to him at Texas Tech. Oklahoma assumed he liked it and he got it there. He's made it an icon. Can he make himself and his team Rose Bowl heroes this afternoon and advance to the national championship game, the other semifinal in New Orleans, and we go to Kevin Nagani. Reese, thank you so much. Reminding you that both semifinal games are on ESPN as well as streaming live on the ESPN app. So you can watch all the action on the go. Irvin between the legs, spins, falling away. It's up. It's good. James all the way to the finish. This halftime report is presented by Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Touch. Updating you with some games going on right now. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. And UCF has been dominant so far, controlling the flow of the game. But Jared Stidham, nice look, finds Will Hastings for the score. Right now, UCF holding a 13-12 lead over Auburn. A little bit of a surprise there. Meanwhile, South Carolina just scored. And now it's a 19-16 game. We didn't see a lot of offense in that game in the first half. Outback ball over on ESPN. Two and letting you know here, Jesse and Joey uh, have been going head to head in the Capital One Bowl Mania. We're hitting the home stretch. Jesse entering the day with a 76 point lead. And the best thing about this, as soon as it's over, I never have to see Joey dance again. I am with you. <laughs> I am, because Joey will tell you he's got one move, and we've seen enough of it. <laughs> Trust me, we've seen too much of it. LSU and Notre Dame all about the defense in the first half. Will we see some offense? We'll find out. Here's a tribute to Hurricane First Responders by the Celebration Choir.
Some say my blood runs purple. That's because I am a tiger. I spell go with an X. Who needs purple when you have a heart of gold? 130 years, 11 championships. The voices of Jerome Bettis intoning passionately along with Shaquille O'Neal from their respective schools. Welcome back everyone to the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's on ABC as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. As we take a look at our CarMax halftime statistics for you. Uh, the number is not really jumping off the page here so far. No, and that's because the star running backs have really been bottled up by these defenses. Uh, you think about Darius Geis, he's been shut down except for a 31-yard run that he had, and Adams has struggled a bit as well with uh, about 19 yards rushing. LSU is going to receive the kick here in the third quarter. They defer to the second half after winning the opening coin toss. This is Edwards Allaire taking a knee. It'll come out to the 25-yard line, first down and 10. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Yeah, you know, Jonesy, uh, you have a, a layoff. Sometimes special teams become an issue. It was Ellis, ugly, bro. Oh, man, Ellis, he was struggled with that. A couple missed field goals. Some bad decisions on fielding punts. And then you get guys with one really big run for 31 yards. 47 on the afternoon. And again, Adams. Again, 19 yards and two star running backs who both may be playing their last college games. Yes. You know, haven't touched the ball enough and haven't had the big plays that we would expect. Well, guys had some issues with his glove wear. Well documented by Quinn in the first half. Good pass protection by Guys and Etling forced to throw it away. Good coverage in the secondary by Notre Dame. Look, in, in a game like this, where the defenses are shutting down the rushing attack and you can't sustain drives, it becomes about big plays. You know, it becomes about the play that your quarterback can make. It becomes about the play that your star receivers, whether it's St. Brown or whether it's Chark, you know, can make a big play. And instead of giving you just 10 or 15 or 20 yards, they get a big gainer and get you in the end zone or get you a field goal. There's guys trying to do just that. Tried to cut it back and is tackled at the 26-yard line. A gain of one, maybe two on the play by Coney. Quint, what's up? Third and medium and third and long in this game is, is a killer. Brian Kelly is saying, you know, if you don't have success on first down against this defense, he's not going to have any success at all. It, I think the same holds true for the Tigers. With that in mind, look for Notre Dame to try to gain some rhythm. They'll still use both quarterbacks, but I would be shocked if Ian Book didn't start this third quarter. Quint, neither team throws it well enough to convert on third and medium, third and long, at least not consistently. Looking at third and eight here for the Tigers. Etling, nowhere to go. Trying to get it to Geis, incomplete. A quick three and out to start the third quarter for LSU. And it's even worse when you can't protect the quarterback. You know, we, we've we seen Notre Dame's quarterbacks, Book in particular, get knocked around. And we've seen Etling under duress as well. So that's an issue. Etling uh, is coming off his best game of the season in their last game against Texas A&M, but far less productive here. Von Rosenberg punting to Chris Fink. It hit a player. It might have hit a Notre Dame player's leg. LSU jumping on it. And it's going to be LSU football. That's just poor communication. You have to be talking to each other. If you're the punt return guy, you have to make it clear that your guys know where the ball is and to get away from it. That was the long snapper, Ferguson, hustling downfield and recovering the loose ball. Yeah, you, you just, you got to talk. That's... That's almost inexcusable, and that's what Brian Kelly is talking about. You know, you've got to talk and know where the ball is. you got to help your guys out. Mm. First down and 10. 
LSU catching a break here. Special teams once again. This time it goes in favor of LSU. Dice to the wide side of the field. Cuts it back. And tackled to the 40-yard line. Picked up about three on the play. You see him finish that run? Well, that's one of the things you like about him. You, you talk about guys who love to play. And they are really competitive. And they finish runs. I talked about him running angry. He, he says he runs angry. <laughs> and he lowers the shoulder. And he's... He's not the biggest running back, but he's not as small as you think. He's a good 215 pounder, stands a solid 5'11, 5 5'11 11, 5 11 and a half, and he runs with intensity. There he is, guys, a young man who has uh, fought through adversity his entire life and been successful doing it. Etlin downfield, intended for Chark, and it's caught right outside field goal range. Catch Are you by DJ sure? Chark. You sure about that? Still go range? <laughs> yeah, they've missed two. And they were closer, and that's a nice job by Chark. That's an NFL catch. He gets two feet in. You only need one in college. He's a senior. Pass to the short side of the field. This time, D. Anderson, the six foot six inch target, working against Julian Love for the reception. Now, if I were Notre Dame defensively, I would overplay in the secondary. I'd overplay outside routes. I mean, you really haven't had much of Etling over the middle. It's been the out route. It's been the corner route. And, and if you're going to be in man coverage, overplay that. If you're going to be in zone, you got eyes on him. You know, overplay that. Force them to change and throw where they don't want to, which is over the middle. Yeah, Etling's comfort zone are those outside throws. Guys between the tackles, nowhere to go. Notre Dame impenetrable that time up top and in, in the middle. You know what Notre Dame has done. They've taken the jet sweep away from LSU. You see that we don't see much of it no. now. And, and they were overplaying that and using their safeties with it. That LSU has kind of moved away from the jet sweep and gone really to more of a basic. We're going to use our big back guys inside. And we're going to throw the ball outside. See if. LSU counters with something here on third and five. Chark spit wide to the bottom of your screen. Etlin looking that way. Geis over the middle. Complete. Darius Geis. Nice touchdown. Points off turnovers, and this is just a little circle route out of the backfield. I want you to watch the way he finishes this run. There are two potential tacklers. Watch him finish this at the goal line. Head of steam, he is not being denied. Look at him lower himself and get in there. A determined Darius Geis. Rod with his first receiving touchdown of the season, so NFL scouts who are watching know that he can catch it too, right? Showing some hands. <laughs> the gloves must work. It must be the glove. It was all set up by the special teams gap by Notre Dame. Yep, poor communication. That's a turnover. And when you get a turnover, you want points off turnover. First touchdown of the day. LSU up. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Kendrick Lamar going to be performing at halftime. The national championship game, he's got that loyalty inside his you, DNA. You get that royalty, and I love it. You're just, you can be humble. <laughs> I like that. He said, he rapped about it, so <laughs> got to take it to heart. And LSU rallying during that last drive, capitalizing on the special teams month by Notre Dame. And Darius Geis, there were some people that questioned whether he would play today or not, with him projected to be a first-round pick. The ball is loose. Again? They can't get on it. They watched it bounce. It's fielded by the Irish. Finally, Durham Smythe, the tight end. It's like nobody saw it bounce there, Rod. Let's take a look. One more look at it. It was a high kickoff, and it's live once it goes more than 10 yards. Yeah. Now you saw one returner pointing, but you got to make sure you're yelling and screaming. I 
can't tell from up here if he was doing that. He was clearly pointing, but they were asleep. Special teams, man. Today, yeah. ooh, story of this game. And we have Ian Book in at quarterback to start the third quarter for the Irish. He led them in a field goal range. And the ultimate field goal at the end of the first half, pass complete to the tight end. Wisher, Quint? Yeah, it's not for this coaching staff not warning or pleading with their guys. Prior to that kickoff, the kickoff's going into the wind. Move up, move up, move up. Expect the short kick. And, and then you see the players react to it like, oh, that's your ball, not mine, your ball. Your, and, and they let it land. It, it, uh, amazing. Well, Q, you know, when you have a layoff where you start the season, special teams, always an issue. Adams found the steam and got the first down with some determined running out to the 36. Greedy Williams making the tackle on the play. A seven-yard gain by Adams. And interesting, we haven't said Greedy Williams' name much here today. The All-American cornerback, number 29 for LSU, a lockdown corner. They run it inside this time. That was Josh Adams again, White making the tackle. But uh, I guess we haven't said greedy because they haven't tested him. Probably. Look, you know, both quarterbacks have had some issues to run the ball down the field. And part of the, the issue has been protection, but they're also missing some, some opportunities, some good receivers as well. So greedy hasn't been able to gobble up some things. Yeah, five interceptions on the season tops on the team. Notre Dame running again. Adams tackled at the 42-yard line. It'll be third down coming up. You know, uh, Josh Adams to, to go old school. There's a little bit of Eric Dickerson in him. Oh, I like that. You know, tall, rangy running back. Runs a little bit upright. Great speed. 6'2", six 6'2 two, six two and a half, if you will. You know, he had seven runs over 60 yards this season. He, he's due to break one. If he gets a little bit of a, of a crack, he can go. Yeah, Brian Kelly told us that he's the hardest working star player he's ever had. Third down and four. Book literally running in circles and then finds a receiver complete for the first down at the 48. That's Durham Smythe who recovered that kickoff a moment ago before LSU could. And Smythe is a guy who has worked really, really hard to make himself into an NFL prospect, and, and he is one now. I mean, that wasn't the case a couple years ago, but now he is legitimately an NFL prospect. Adams again. They try and pound away. He makes it down to the 48. Rashard Lawrence with the tackle on the play. A five-yard gain by Adams. I do like what Brian Kelly has decided here. He's got the threat of Book throwing the ball. And he's got that left side of the line. And there's none better in college football. When you talk about McGlinchey over there and Nelson over there. Two first-round picks. And he's got behind them and he's running the football. This time it's going to be Book running it to the other side. Broke a tackle, makes it down to the 45-yard line. About two yards shy of that first down. Back to Josh Adams in a visit with him yesterday. Notre Dame won four games last year. He said, Josh, what were you doing last year at this time? He said, man, I was watching football games on television. Mm -hmm. uh, this team and program have come a long way in 12 months. Tony Jones now in a tailback. Adams on the sidelines. LSU trying to get lined up. Book going to pass on the bootleg. First down complete to Wisher. And a tackle made just shy of the 35 by Tyler Taylor, one of those freshman starting linebackers, but a gain of 10 rod. They're doing a good job of mixing up things this series. Run left behind, you know, your two big linemen. Use Book to throw the ball a little bit. But, but that left side of the line, you know, those two guys, They've been like brothers for years, you know, and look how much they've played together. Over 800 snaps together lining up next to each other. Three sacks? Yeah. Put that into perspective. Real right? <laughs> Yep. That's crazy. On first and ten, Book surveying comes underneath to Michael Young. And Young pushed out of bounds at about the 35. See all the time he had, the protection. Nothing was coming from that left side. I and mean, Book didn't even have to worry about his blind side. He had a lot of protection back over there. Yeah. As we see that there's one player down that looks like that's Alexander. This LSU defense already missing several key players on that side of the ball. Donnie Alexander, Arden Key, a couple of NFL guys. 
And we're going to take a short time out and come back on the other side. Stick around. The Citrus Bowl on ABC, presented by Overton's. Overton's, America's marine and water sports superstore. In part by your local Lexus dealer. Make this a December to remember. At Franklin American Mortgage, it all begins with home. Look at some of the parade festivities yesterday. Part of the great happenings surrounding the... Weren't, Citrus Bowl. Weren't the uh, Grand Marshals uh, Lou Holtz and Michael Clayton? Yes. Nice. Tony Jones in a tailback. Book keeps it and has a little bit of room. Great move and got the first down. All the way to the 26-yard line. A missed tackle costly by Dante Jackson of the Tigers' 10-yard gain. Yeah, Jackson missed that tackle right in front of his defensive coordinator, Dave Aranda. That's the 11th play of the drive, and Aranda, again, is working shorthanded. Three starting linebackers out, but his freshman, there he is, his freshmen have played pretty well in this ball game. First and 10, Young in motion. They run it into the boundary. That's Jones, a flag down on the play. Jones broke a couple of tackles. Boy, what a run. Impressive the way he finished that off. And it's coming back. With Notre Dame missing a couple of receivers, Jones getting more action. Illegal motion by number 87 of the offense. He went in motion from the line of scrimmage. And Kelly is fuming on the sideline as he was sprinting down the, the sideline to the field judge. He said, I called timeout. Excuse me, the line judge. I called timeout. I called timeout. He was there. I was right behind him. He did. Uh, but the play was good. And he saw the illegal formation. He knew it. He wanted a timeout to avoid it. Mm. Well, they're going to move it back five yards, Q, and first and 15. Well, how much pressure does Aranda come, come with on first down here? But those young freshman linebackers. Oh, got picked off. He tried to get a little greedy, and he got greedy at the other end. Greedy Williams with his sixth interception of the year. And a flag down at the end of the play. We just brought his name up, talking about how they hadn't tested him, and they tested him at the wrong time, Rod. Well, there is Book, and it's just an ill-advised throw. And nothing fancy about it. He recognizes it now, but it's too late. Hmm. An illegal block in the back by number 40 of the intercepting team. The penalty is half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. Greedy Williams with the pick here. You see him at the bottom of your screen, sitting right there. And he's underneath Boykin, the route where he's trying to go. But Greedy Williams is sitting right there. Boykin, uh, Boykin is the deep receiver. And he's just not, you, you got to see the field. And it's harder for young quarterbacks to see the field. It takes them time. He got the nickname Greedy from an aunt who was feeding him as an infant when he consumed some three bottles of formula in an hour. <laughs> Is that a lot? <laughs> hey, man. I remember Similac days weren't that long ago, Rod. That, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot, huh? Okay. <laughs> Greedy Williams with his sixth interception of the year from the Shreveport area. Plays for his brothers in northwest Louisiana. Led the SEC in interceptions this year. Third team All-American. Is there a better nickname in college football? Oh, I love that. Chark in motion on the jet sweep action. They give it to Geis. Nice little sidestep move and falls down to the 14-yard line. Cassidy, what's good? All right, Mark. Outback Bowl getting interesting. Michigan and South Carolina, Jake Bentley. 53 yards to Shai Smith to put the Gamecocks up 23-19 after scoring 20 straight points to take their first lead this game over on ESPN2. Mark Rod. All right, Cassidy. Meanwhile, Etling has hit 10 of his last 13 passes. Well, and this is a big third down if you want to 
get out from the shadow of your own goal post and have some field position. Chark in motion. Now at the top of the screen. Etling looks the other way. And he's sacked back to the seven. Big play by the Irish defense. Couple of the guys there. Okwara the first. He was joined by Niles Morgan. Now he's trying to go to, to Gage in the middle of the field. He sees that in the last second. He's covered and he can't throw it. No time with the pressure. Good job out of Notre Dame bringing a little extra heat. Well, Quint told us that Morgan lost his captaincy before the game because of an in-house issue, but he made a nice play there. Fair catch at the 49-yard line by Chris Fink, and the Irish will have good starting field position on LSU's side of the field when we return to Orlando. Oh, oh. Well, tonight is the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. First up at 5 o'clock, number two, Oklahoma. Number three, Georgia kicking things off the college football playoff at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Then at 845, number one, Clemson. Number four, Alabama. College football playoff at the All-State Sugar Bowl from New Orleans. Look at some of the hot topics on Overton's overlook of those two games. This is Brooke into field goal range at the 34-yard line. Dante Jackson making the tackle on the 15-yard gain. Misdirection play really confused those young linebackers. Again, we talked about that. Three starters out, and where are your eyes? And that, that misdirection pulled them completely away to the left, and that play was run back to their right. Look on the bootleg. Adams broke a tackle. Boy, he put it on spin cycle down to the 30. Quint? Rod, I'm standing in the right end zone, pretending I'm basically in the LSU secondary. And there's a lot of conflicting data visually, yep. whether it's pullers, tight ends scraping across the formation, a quarterback faking and moving. Uh, the misdirection in the second half has led to some missed assignments. Well, you got young linebackers, Q, and you see misdirection, and you know you look at the ball, you're confused. And a lot of these guys have had that issue on, on this drive in particular. Little jet sweep, now reverse. They're going to throw it after all that. Pass complete. A lot of moving parts, Rod, and no yards to account for. Tony Jones brought down immediately by Dante Jackson. Well, look, when you run a trick play like that, don't you want to throw it down the field? I mean, that's a lot of work to, to make a five-yard pass. You do that, you want to air that out. That's a, a negative two yards on that play. There's Dave Aranda. You know, he's... He's one of the hottest defensive coordinators in the game. He gets job offers every time he wakes yeah. up, you know? His defense doing a nice job so far, limiting the Irish to three points. Tony Jones on the reception. Tackle just shy of the 30-yard line by Greg Gilmore. Gilmore out of Hope Mills, North Carolina, the senior. Several seniors playing their final game for the Tigers. Quint? This is right on the edge of a Notre Dame field goal range. The wind is slightly at his back. Right now it's going to push this kick towards the, the TV booth to, to the right. And he's got to hit this perfectly given the conditions. Lightly raining right now too, Mark. He's 13 to 17 on the year. Made one earlier from 46. This one from 49. Justin Yoon. And it's true. Two for two from outside 40 yards. And the Irish within a point of tying LSU. Welcome back, everyone, to the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's. Part of Capital One Bowl Mania, LSU leading Notre Dame 7 to 6. And this is the 12th edition of these two teams. Banging helmets. Last time they met was the Music City Bowl. Back in 2014, the Irish winning it on a last second field goal. A 
Edwards are there, and they're going to start things off on the 25-yard line. First down and 10. Well, wild card weekend beginning of Saturday at 4.20 Eastern time with the AFC matchup between the Titans and the Chiefs from Arrowhead on ABC and ESPN, also available on the ESPN app. Danny Etling has been pretty hot. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, the book got picked off by Greedy Williams a few moments ago. And uh, got to wonder now, or he's going to be the guy probably the rest of the way for the Irish. Well, maybe. We'll, we'll see. I mean, you know, long way to go. First and ten for Etling. They were waiting at home for Etling, and he scrambles for a pickup of two. Tavon Coney making the tackle on the play. You know, Jonesy, we've had guys play in this ball game, and a lot of discussion about guys skipping bowl games. And Q, I'm curious, how do you feel about uh, guys playing in this game and, and having played so much? Well, quite honestly, I was surprised. I really thought after being injured and missing some practice time that he'd come out, warm up, and probably not play. And if, if he played, it might only be for that first quarter. But I am really impressed with with the intangibles I'm seeing from, from Darius. Averaging five yards a carry, 60 yards total. Picks up a few on this. And, uh, Rod, if I'm a first-round pick, I've shut it down already. That's well, just life when it comes to football, the amount of hits that you take. Well, Leonard Fournette did that. You know, and Josh Rosen may have had the most mature statement about this. You know, a lot of people bash those guys, but some of them have to realize that some of these guys have families. Some of these guys have kids. Some of these guys really have to support the people around them. I think should be, people should look at their story and see how football is affecting their life and make every situation an individual choice, not some, you know, broad rule that should apply. Sure. It's a personal decision. Etling into traffic. Got him. And oh, caught at the 42-yard line by Foster Morrow. What a grab. He is a really good receiver at 6'5", 261. He's made plays like this all season. Ball secured. Leg in bounds. That is a 26-yard catch. Williams in a tailback on first and 10. And now they're going to look at this. LSU tried to get up on the line. Let's go back to that Darius Guy situation. And if you're a first-round pick, there is a bit of a dilemma when it comes to the previous playing play or not. Is under further review. One more look at this first. So two things you want to check. Does he have control of the ball? Does he complete the process? Is he in bounds? Looks to me like he probably is in bounds there with some, you know, that, right. that underneath leg. It's the left leg. He gets foot down. He gets shin down. It looks pretty good to me. He gets foot down. Foot hits right there, and he's in bounds with control of the football. After yeah. further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Sometimes we don't even want to believe our lying eyes anymore. I know. Right? <laughs> when you slow things down, you can get a little distortion, you know? <laughs> Moreau with a great catch. But uh, we Dr. started. Dre made a living by slowing things down, right? <laughs> it's like you show people walkings in slow mo. They look cool instead of being a bunch of squares, right? 109 to go here in the third quarter. But getting back to your point about skipping bowl games. You know, uh, there are some coaches who feel very strongly that players ought to, ought to play. And Orgeron is, is one of those guys. Williams on the carry, in for Geis. But a great sidestep. And Williams picks up a first down on a 12-yard gain. Coney making the tackle. Right now, Williams helping his team out. In for Geis. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Shark checking into the ball game, along with Moore. And Orgeron's point was like, hey, you know, it's a team sport. You got to be loyal to your team. You got to play. And he is 100% against players skipping games. Now, I asked him about coaches leaving. And he said, ah, it's different. You know, they got different. a job. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be Williams. And yeah, it doesn't stop coaches from moving on well, and, and collecting money. And Orgeron's view is not 
you know, unbiased. He's got a financial interest in his own self, like a lot of coaches. I mean, he's got a hundred thousand dollar bonus riding on winning game number ten. Yeah. yeah. You know. And that's the end of the third quarter of play. The Bayou Bengals leading by a point, seven to six. The Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's will continue, continue, folks, after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back for the start of the fourth quarter in the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's the 72nd edition of this game LSU leading by a point going into the fourth quarter They've got the ball in the 31 yard line Mark Jones Rod Gilmore quick Kesnick down to the field LSU's had issues on field goals today and they're on the fringes of field goal yeah. range with some decisions here now. Yeah, I, I think it becomes two down territory for them and, and maybe not think about the field goal but the real first order of business is protecting Etling they've had trouble with Notre Dame's pressure on second down and ten, and we don't even get a chance to snap it out of the timeout. We have a penalty against the Tigers. A false start by number 77 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Hey, what about the job of Danny Etling today? Has been very efficient, 13 of 21, 175 yards. Rock. The good news is he hasn't thrown an interception. That's a win today, well, right? That's his game. I mean, he takes care of the football. He only had two picks during the season. And he's run it occasionally when he needed to. And he's managing the game the way they want him to. Second and 15. Moore in motion. Back across the formation. Chark with the catch at the 24-yard line. About three yards shy of the first down. Another ball to the outside. And again, you know, that's, that's where they're going. And as a defensive back, when a quarterback rolls your way, you figure there's only one place he can throw that ball outside. So you need to go outside. It's so hard for him to throw back across the middle. So you feel that roll to your side. You think outside and deep. You don't think about inside passes. Sharp with four catches for 55 yards after that last one. Etling got hit hard right at the first down mark. Let's see if he got enough. Coney was there to hit him, along with Studsill. See what kind of spot they give him. Boy, Edling took a hit, Rod. He put his hat down, and it looks like he got enough for the first down. Yeah, not, not a fan of seeing your quarterback lower his shoulder and his head to try to pick up the first down there. That's a, that's a big hit he took there. You know, and this is this is likely Etling's last start at quarterback in football. I mean, he's not considered an NFL guy, at least by the most experts right. anyway. So if this is his last start, you know, he's certainly going out, leaving it all out there. And he got his team a first down. Take one more look at uh, the end of this run and. I was just going to say as I watched that rod we haven't had a targeting call today which is which is rare when you look at the type of season and the increase in the amount of targeting calls so far. I'm not saying that they're looking at target right. here but we haven't had one. They're yeah, looking I, at the spot. Yeah looking at the spot. Yeah. They gave him a first down on the spot. Dice back in the game for LSU. There he is number five. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. Chark this time on the catch. About two yards short of the first down. Julian Love making the tackle for Notre Dame as LSU in the red zone. Smart, smart play. Edling realized that the corner on that side was laying off very, very far from his receiver, Chark, and just raised up and picked up the yardage. You know, if you're, you're going to give me that, I'm going to take it because I can't go broke taking a little profit there. Oh, Rod, you mentioned Etling. This being perhaps his last game. Five years, four coaches, a couple of schools. In the penultimate moment of his career. Second and two against the Irish. Hands it off to Geis. 
Boy, guys breaking tackles all the way down to the three. Are you kidding me? Invariable, inexorable effort by Darius Guys. He ran through and over Greer Martini. He's dishing out punishment. The cutback and then lower the shoulder. Watch the leg drive. He is so strong, so powerful in his lower body. He doesn't go down. Just watch him carry people here. The drive, he continues to drive. Again, he's an angry runner. Self-described angry runner. First down and goal. Dice again. Tried to get airborne, lunging for the end zone. No call. They're going to spot it short now. About a foot before that goal line. And Dice got his little strut on right there. He's ready to get it one more time. Second and goal coming up. Give it to him again. Got to. He's carried it the last two times. Second and goal. More in motion. A great lead blocker. Guys, stoned. Stopped. Tranquil. Tranquil at the two. And now it's third down and goal. They've had issues kicking field goals. Got to figure they go for it. Four down territory, Rob? Absolutely. Hey, Phil, figure you got two plays down there, Q. Quarterback run is an option here with Danny Etling. Potentially bootleg. It's a separately good runner around the goal line. You take the ball away from Geis in that situation. I'm giving it to Geis. Third and goal. Etling. Geis. You were right, they gave it to Geis. He's pretty good, huh? And you start adding Sundays catching the ball out of the backfield to what he does with running it. The second touchdown of the day, the extra point, good eight-point lead for LSU. Etling with a touchdown pass. How special of a year has it been when you have running backs like Geis, Barkley, Bryce Love, Jones. Offside, number 27 of the defense. The penalty is declined, points are good. Darius Geis with the touchdown catch. As they say down in Baton Rouge, Geis rhymes with red beans and rice. And Edling's mom and dad enjoying the moment. Back to Orlando after this. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the pertinent numbers so far. And that was an impressive drive by Etling in the third quarter. Pardon me, in the start of the fourth quarter a moment ago, 16 to 24 overall. A couple of touchdown passes. The book 10 of 13. And with Notre Dame about to get the ball here, Rod, what do you make of what's transpired here today and the dynamic between Book and Wimbush the rest of the way and beyond today. It, it bears watching. It may not just be an issue for the second half. It may be going into 2018. Let's go back to Cassidy in the studio. Thanks, Mark. Let's go back to the Peach Bowl. Tied at 20 until Mackenzie Milton finds Dregix Nelson. An eight-yard score to give the Knights a 27-20 lead in the fourth. This went over on ESPN. Mark, Rod, back to you. All right, Cassidy Etling getting a little breather on the sidelines after moving his field downfield 70, his team downfield 75 yards on that last drive. Dexter Williams in a tailback now for Notre Dame. Ian Book in a quarterback still. Wimbush has not played in the second half. 
Toss into the boundary, hard running by Dexter Williams out to the 30, Rashard Lawrence making the tackle. Well, you made the point about Wimbush. There he is on, on the sideline. And again, that was your starter all season long. And in this ball game, he's been replaced by Book. And Book has taken over, you know, 10 of 13 passing. And he's been the leading rusher for Notre Dame now. Book hands it off. This is Williams again, darting into LSU territory. And a first down, down to the 39. Yeah, he's starting to eat a little bit for the Irish, a 31-yard pickup. Yeah, watch the offensive lineman on the right side pull. You got a little counter going. He didn't even wait for the block. He had one of his linemen coming around too slow for him. That was Tommy Kramer. He's like, I'm not waiting. I'm getting out of here. And he saw the lane, and he hit it. Josh Adams watching this one from the sidelines right now. Book off the play fake. Nowhere to go, and that might be grounding. Good heat by Devin White. Didn't see a flag on the play. Devin White's had a big game. White has caused a lot of the pressure today that LSU has brought. Shows up here. It looked like they got a part of his arm, and yeah, and now they're going to. Grounding by number 12 of the offense. The pass did not get to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of down. It's third down. Yeah, I had said that that should be grounded. Second down. Yeah, they're going to lose it down now. and A loss of 13. With the penalty. Brian Kelly certainly not happy with the call on the sideline. He's been working those officials all afternoon. I'm wondering if he was arguing, hey, my guy was hit. Mm. There's Adams who's back in the game. And Josh Adams tackled by Lockature. And, you know, if that's Brian Kelly's argument, he's like, you're flagging my guy for grounding when he had a guy in his face who hit him and prevented him from throwing yeah. the ball you know, beyond the line of scrimmage. I mean, I, I think that's what Brian Kelly is probably saying to the officials that my guy got hit. Third and 19. Book taking a shot. Caught at the 20 yard line. Wow, what a grab by Boykin. And what a throw. Thread the needle between two defenders. Look at the touch. One guy deep, one guy shallow. He gets it over Greedy Williams, drops it right in. Book keeps it. And it's going to be first down and goal from the nine-yard line. Book with another spirited run to pick up ten. Are we seeing a changing of the guard at quarterback that sets up for 2018 for Notre Dame? Yeah, Wimbush is the four-star recruit. The starter, but not the guy right now. Second and one. Adams gets the first down. Now it's first and goal. Divinity Jr. making the tackle for LSU. Look, you know, Brian Kelly has you know, been known for using multiple quarterbacks, for being demanding of his quarterbacks. And he's demanding better performance, better production out of the quarterback spot at Notre Dame. And I suspect their spring practice will be competitive. He was glowing in his praise for Wimbush coming into the game, but sometimes things don't translate from practice to game time. Book, he's not going to outrun anybody on LSU's defense. Brought down right near the line of scrimmage by Jacob Phillips, a true freshman from Nashville. Yeah, It'll Phillips, be second and goal. 6'3", 237, was Mr. Football in Tennessee of the, the Class 3A division. They got some guys, some dudes at linebacker for LSU. Well, they get off the bus and you go, that's what a team is supposed to look like. Second and goal. Two tight ends, two receivers. Hook looking back the other way, but coverage. Batted down nicely at the last second by Ray Thornton. 
one of those true freshman linebackers getting some reps in the absence of Key and Alexander. He underthrew it. He had plenty of time and plenty of space. He just got this a little bit straight. You got to get it over towards the corner and let your receiver Smythe go get it. Instead, it's a little bit short. Tried to be too perfect with it. Third down and goal. Third down and goal now. Ball at the six. Empty formation, five receivers for Ian Book. Nobody open. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame, Michael Young. Book with just his third touchdown pass of the season, coming at a very opportune time. Well, that one was spectacular. He was patient. He bought time. He surveyed the field. He found Young in the back of the end zone. And, you know, you get to the fourth quarter, that's when you should be going for two. And this is the right decision. Some, some coaches chase two-point conversions too early, and it comes back to bite them. But when you're in the fourth quarter, all good. Go for two whenever you like. Irish trying to tie it up here. On the shovel pass, Adams. He got in. No. It looked like he got in. They're going to mark him short. No signal. And no, they don't get the two-point conversion. Well, the Notre Dame players are walking off the field saying he was in. It appeared from this angle like he was in. Let's take another look. I'd be surprised if they didn't review this. Well, they will review. They review everything. They're looking yeah. at this. It's the ball. He's over. That ball breaks the plane. That breaks the plane from that angle. I wonder if the far side official couldn't see it. And Brian Kelly's got a good argument right now. Look for the ball. It's the, the ball play is breaking under the plane. Review. Let's take one more look. Not so much the body. Look for the ball. Find the ball breaking the plane. And it'll show up momentarily right here. That's the ball. Right there, it's over. And it's over. It's he over. He's in the end zone. The ball's in the end zone. Yeah, that, that's what I saw from our vantage point. Now, I didn't hear a whistle way before then. No. And he's in right yeah, there. Yeah, he's in. Remember, you need conclusive video evidence. Walt, what do you think of that? We have think, uh, Walt in the booth, our replay official. Yes, I believe they'll overturn this to a touchdown. One of the things that officials will do, the wing officials are the officials responsible for making the call, but if they can't see the football, they'll do what they did, which is charge in, find the ball, and when they did find it, it was in the field of play. Gotcha. This is really one of the reasons why we've got instant replay. I got believe it. this will be reversed and the two-point try will count. Makes sense. That's an interesting dynamic, Walt, that they have the wing officials responsible and then they come in and just look for it afterwards. Those are the two officials that have yeah. to rule on that. And when they can't see the ball, what they're, what they're taught to do is to come in and find the ball, and it is wherever it is. At that moment? At that moment when they find it, yes. All right, it's Walt. not their job to speculate that he may have gotten in, right. mm -hmm. but that is what replay's role is, is to them review the play. Walt Anderson, our... Official in the booth, and After here's the further call. Review, the runner broke the plane of the goal line before he was down. It's two points. And with that, we're knotted at 14. Adams got in. LSU shrugging their collective shoulders. Good finish coming up, folks. Stick around. Happy New Year. The Citrus Bowl on ABC, presented by Overton's. Overton's, America's marine and water sports superstore. In part by Pacific Life, experience the power of Pacific. And Burger King, mix or match two of our favorite sandwiches for just six bucks. Guys with a couple of touchdowns. Notre Dame tied it up a moment ago on the two-point conversion as we take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup. 
Brought to you by Progressive, the Big Ten Conference, out there slaying right now, Rod Gilmore. You know what? I think you ought to get more points for winning a New Year's Six and January One bowl game. You ought to get bonus points. It, Why? It, well, they shouldn't all be equal. Not all games are created equal. So you think? No, rated? they're not. They're not created equal. You're right. What, a half a point? A quarter point? No, oh, big points, man. <laughs> Loose ball! Big hit! As Clyde Edwards Alaire just got to the kickoff in time and then got rocked by Jonathan Jones. The special teams really have been an adventure most of the afternoon. And that ball almost became available to Notre Dame and a big hit there. But Jones been looking at the ball. He might have caught it first. He had a shot. It was close. First down and 10, 7.48 to go. The last time these two teams met was in Nashville several years ago. Notre Dame winning on a last second field goal. This one appears destined to the same type of frenetic ending. A little counter, Geis. Good shake across the 30 to the 31 yard line, setting up second down and two. He is so quick and he's got a nice little dance, little, little shimmy here. Right there, a little juke. And he made something that looked like nothing into a five yard, seven yard game. There is guys gained 1,153 yards this year. Go back to last year, he was Leonard Fournette's backup. And ended up leading the SEC in total rush yards. Guys picking up the first down, and what a great story. A young man who, whose life was stricken with tragedy early, his father passing away when he was six years old, and he's turned it all into a positive. But he has been the man of the house since he was seven. His mom, Beulah, working multiple jobs. He's got two siblings and likely today playing his last game as an LSU Tiger, but he has shown the eye of the Tiger with his competitive spirit today. Well, great job, Q. First down and 10. Edwin caught at the 49-yard line. Sullivan and Etling took a big hit, but bounces right back up. A gain of 14 on the ball. Yeah, don't question his toughness. I mean, that's a, the second time today we've seen Etling stand in there and take the big hit that he knows is coming. He knew it was coming, and he knew that he had his receiver, Sullivan, crossing, and he had to buy him some time. Well, he bought some time, and he bought a big hit. First down and 10. 6.15 to go, clock running. LSU and Notre Dame each with three timeouts. Geis stopped up at the 47-yard line by Jerry Tillery. Well, Tillery was the first to get there, but Coney was also there. Coney is having a day. I mean, that was the 16th tackle he's been involved in. He's got seven solo tackles. You talk about a guy playing his heart out. Yeah. He's getting it done. Great story from a guy who wasn't starting. And now to maybe their best linebacker. Became comfortable in their system. Brian Kelly feels good about the first coat of paint that they put on this defense at Notre Dame. Etling. Well, that's going to gonna be a flag. Down. That should be a flag. I'm not so sure that he was hit or that the defender couldn't slam on the brakes in time, Rod, and oh. ended up running him I, over. I, I thought I thought he was hit out of bounds, and it's a safety issue. Here's you another get, look. Well, watch how far out of bounds he is. Now he's pretty much dead there. Now he's out. Look at that. Oh, he's five yards out of bounds, and he's trying to go out of bounds. He's way out of bounds, and then there's the hit. And that's so dangerous. Yeah. You know, you want player safety. That, that's got to be flat. Notre Dame might have gotten away with one there. From the 42, first and 10, 501 to go. And LSU is going to call a timeout. LSU Both these teams looking for their 10th win of the season. 
And for Ed Orgeron and LSU, their seventh win in their last eight games. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Our game summary brought to you by Pacific Life. Darius Geis with a couple of receiving touchdowns in this game. He's been pretty spectacular. A couple times out of the backfield, Edling managing the game, getting the ball to him, and then, you know, a little bit of good defense and then poor defense, poor tackling, a big play. You get a big run out of Notre Dame and a little bit of a spark from Ian Book. That was our game summary brought to you by Pacific Life. Darrell Williams taking a wildcat snap here. And he found a crease over the right side out to the 30-yard line. You see an example of them being a formation team, right? Well, you see the shift. They go to the right side, and all of a sudden you got an extra couple of gaps over there, and then you pull another blocker to that side. They get Notre Dame outnumbered over there, and it's a nice run by Williams. All that shifting in motion makes the defense think, and you try to get lined up, and you don't always cover every gap. Williams again going to take the direct snap. Trying the same side. Cut it back in a yard outside of field goal range, although field goal range is an operative term right now. It's a fluid term. Don't forget tonight, Rose Bowl game. Oklahoma, Georgia, Clemson, Alabama after that, the All-State Sugar Bowl. Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Second and six here. Can't wait for those games. I can ask you who you like at some point. This is what it looks like right there in Pasadena. There is nothing like going to a Rose Bowl game. It is an iconic stadium, great views, and usually a fantastic game. Second and six. Edwin on the bootleg complete. That's Morrow breaking a couple tackles inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Tigers with 3.41 to go. LSU again confusing the defense a little bit. You see the adjustment by the Notre Dame guys trying to get lined up. Who's got what gap? Who's got what gap? Just enough to create a little confusion. Nobody has more. Boy, when you can't plant your feet and play defense, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Well, when you're thinking instead of just playing, it's a little harder to play. Dice in the ball game, first and goal. What a second half for Danny Etlin. 9 of 11. And you always got Geis back there. Picks up a yard. Stopped up by Jonathan Bonner. Second down and goal coming up for LSU, who has two timeouts remaining. Looking for their 10th win of the season. This season turned around in the wake of that devastating loss against Troy. They had a players-only meeting. Some of the voices that voiced their opinions impassionately, Morrow, Williams, White, a few others, and then they had an Atlanta Falcon player, former player, come in and talk to them about how they got it back on the rails. This is nice. Down to the five-yard line, moves the pile to the three. Talking about Duke Riley, who came in to address the team. Third and goal. It's a good timeout call by Notre Dame. They need to preserve a bit. They need to play when we come back. Back here, we're not at a 14. LSU, third and goal coming up. Don't forget tonight on ESPN, it's the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, followed by Clemson, Alabama in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Baker Mayfield of Oklahoma taking the field to warm up a few moments ago. Oklahoma in the house, taking on Georgia for the first time. And, uh, yeah, the American Bulldog in the house. Georgia ready to go as well. Back here, third down for Danny Etling. Remember, Geis has caught two touchdown passes already. The inside shuffle pass. Geis! No signal. 
Fourth and, and goal. Short at the goal line. And you got to guess they're going to go for it. Well, and that's a pass. We'll be checking to see did he get in? Did he break the plane? Did a knee hit the ground before that ball got to the goal line? Second time out of the half. Please put two zero seven on the clock. It's not the arm. It's the ball, and it's also looking for the knee or a body part that was down. There's one more look at it, guys. Down apparently there, and yeah, and there's that ball all across the plane. No, not or not in it? that angle. It's not 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 across the plane in that angle. Nope. There's the ball there in his right arm, and yeah, it's short of the goal line. Yeah, from that angle. Darius guys inches short of his third touchdown of the ball game. And Rod, we've chronicled the fact that they've missed two field goals. They got to go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, you would think, but instead, well, and Notre Dame's had to use two of their timeouts to stop the clock. Q. Jack Gonsolin and LSU. They've missed two field goals today. Earlier, Connor Colt missed a chip shot from this exact location, right hash. Gonsolin for the lead, and he knocks it through from a sharp angle. So with 2.03 to go, Eddie O, the head coach, says, field goal? I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> 17 yards out. We're going to stay right here. you got to believe that that sideline for the Tigers did a huge exhale after this kick. Yeah, no field goal has been a gimme for LSU today. And that one was timely. Even Geis. And you think about Notre Dame here in this situation, Jonesy, they had to burn two of their three timeouts to stop the clock on that drive to try to preserve the clock from being run down to a number that just wouldn't work for them. Now you yeah. got 203, but you're down to one timeout. Well, the story of the second half for Notre Dame has been the fact that Ian Book has been the quarterback the entire way. But don't you have to feel for Wimbush though? Yes. You're the starting quarterback all season long. You get to this bowl game, and now you've got an issue about your job. Sanders on the return for the Irish. Out to the 27-yard line, back to Cassidy in the studio. Thanks, Mark. Back to the Peach Bowl, UCF and Auburn. Jarrett Stidham. Picked off here by Shaquan Burkett, 45-yard pick six. Auburn just responded. UCF, UCF is up 34-27, though, over on ESPN. They're still looking to finish the season unbeaten. Coming up at 5 Eastern on ESPN, Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma taking on number three, Georgia. You can see that game also on the ESPN app. Mark, Rod, back to you. All right, Cassidy, big finish here for Notre Dame. 159 to go, one timeout remaining. Remember, he had a nice two-minute drive right before the end of the first half. A field goal to tie, and it'll be second and ten after that bounce pass incomplete. Well, remember, they met several years ago in Nashville in a Music City Bowl, and this is how it ended. Notre Dame and LSU battling right down to the final possessions and ticks of the clock. And that proved to be the game-winning field goal for the Irish. 31-28. to They've won six of the 11 meetings between these teams. Book. Caught at the 45-yard line by Chris Fink. His first reception of the game is an 18-yarder. LSU playing zone coverage on the back end. They are normally a man-to-man -man team. They're giving some looks for Book down the field. Book. Coverage on the end. Top. What a grab! Bacon still on his feet. Happy New Year, Irish. Jonesy, 
Boykin is 6'4", 225, working against Jackson. And he throws him off here. But in the process of throwing him off, did he step out of bounds? Looked good from that angle. Yeah, sure did. He appeared to stay in bounds. And an incredible catch, a career-long reception by Miles Boykin, the extra point good. And the Irish take a four-point lead. An implausible, improbable finish here. Well, LSU was trying to stay away from man coverage to avoid issues like this. They had been playing zone, but they went back to who they are. And Jackson against Boykin seemed like a good matchup, except for the size and leaping ability of Boykin. And then he throws Jackson out of the way, and you got yourself a big, big score for the Irish. And what do you say about Ian Book? Put that ball in the range of Boykin's catching perimeter and area so that he could make a play. And that is as good a catch as we've seen all season under these circumstances, Rod. Well, what, what a day. What a day. You think about Book being the backup all season long and then stepping in today and taking advantage of the opportunity and making a case for himself as the Notre Dame quarterback while Wimbush, on the other hand, was the starter all season long and has set out the entire second half of this game. Wow. 21-17. Down to the 10, Edwards Hilaire. And he's going to be stopped up short of the 25 of the 22-yard line. LSU has two timeouts remaining. With 1.20 to go, tune in to ESPN3 for the postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. Hey, partner, about three hours ago you said, hey, these teams are motivated. Motivation for bowl games really matter. Any question? No doubt now. You look across the sideline, you see a big-time opponent. You see things that you want to get done like 10 wins. And we've had a crisp, hard-hitting enthusiastic game with guys like Geist playing. It's been phenomenal. As good as it gets. Still time for Danny Etling. That pass complete to number 10, Chris Fink. Now they're going to say it's out of bounds. It was out of bounds. Second down coming up. Well, they're sitting on two timeouts. They have plenty of time. Now, when they protected Etling, He's made Notre Dame really pay for it. And again, he's had a tendency to throw outside, the out route and the corner route. Notre Dame has not really jumped on those things yet. That wing, one on one, incomplete. Intended for Derek Dillon. Yeah, Crawford was over there in good position. Didn't allow Dylan to get beyond him. And again, Notre Dame brought some pressure. They are not sitting back saying we're going to be in prevent and let you dink and dunk your way down the field. Mike Elko, their D coordinator, is being aggressive here. Third and ten. Showing pressure. Williams in motion. Edmund's going to have to take off. And he picked up the first down, got down three yards beyond the marker. Out to the 34. With 102 to go, they'll move the chains on the 11 yard run. Under a minute to play. There's that out. Oh, and he sat on it. Love. Coming up just a bit short. Yeah, it was waiting on it. Well, it's the thing we've been talking about all day. As a defensive back, you start to read these patterns and understand the tendencies, and it's been to throw the out and throw the corner. And Love finally jumped on an out, and that's a pick six if he hangs onto it. What if you're Etling in the out and up right now? Does that work for you at all? It might. Yeah. We just haven't seen a lot of double moves out of LSU, you know, with those types of situations. Right. Second down and ten. They need a play. Blitz coming. Etling downfield. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. 
Chark couldn't get there. And it'll be third and ten to Troy Pride Jr. You know, you bring for Notre Dame. Jones, you have to love this. You know, if you're a fan who's watched the games and you've seen prevent defense and you've been frustrated, you have to love how aggressive Notre Dame has been here. They've brought a linebacker blitz. They brought a safety blitz, a delayed blitz. They've gotten man coverage. They are not saying, we're going to allow you to see if you can get down the field and we just won't let anybody get behind us. They're going after Edwin. Play clock is at five. Etling almost intercepted, intended for D. Anderson. And they are down to their last play. Julian Love there to break it up. Love and Pride have done great on the corner. Notre Dame switched it up, showed pressure, only brought three. You're looking into the teeth of what he sees. Eight defenders. Yeah. Hard to find a guy open. Good job by Notre Dame. Little cat and mouse mixing it up, making Edling think about what he's going to have down the field. For Danny Edling, come down to this last play perhaps the Purdue transfer He's played for four different coaches trying to stay alive little blitz coming off the edge and they might have blown this before the play it didn't help Etling who ended up on his backside well, you get a false start and he took a hit prior to the snap a false start by number 77 of the offense. Five yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. That's Sadiq Charles. They yeah, moved a little early. Look, the problem for LSU right now is they, Notre Dame can bring pressure. They have them really unsteady at this point, and you have to protect Edling. And it's fourth down and 15. You've got to make sure. He gets a chance to deliver the ball, so you may have to keep an extra guy in to protect him. Fourth down. Incomplete. Notre Dame takes over on downs. A year ago this time, Brian Kelly's team was at home, disconsolate, disconcerted, in wake of a four-win season. Right now, they're on the brink of their 10th win of this season and well on their way to authoring one of the greatest turnarounds in college football this year. Look, this would be only the third time in the last 10 years that Notre Dame will have had a 10-win season, but the second in three years. And I can't help but think back to watching Notre Dame and Alabama in the championship game two years ago. And the size difference was huge. Not any longer. This Notre Dame team looks a lot different than the one that lost a championship a few years ago. And an ignominious, unceremonious ending for Danny Etling, the quarterback for LSU. Brian Kelly's team winning it. 21 17. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your final. A big play made by Miles Boykin. And he is our Capital One player of the game. He had the game winning 55 yard touchdown catch and run on a pass that seemed to be too high and out of his reach. As we go downstairs to quit with the game-winning quarterback, Ian Book. Ian, congratulations. What emotions were you dealing with in that second half? Uh, you know, we, we were staying calm as much as we could, but, you know, obviously it's such a great atmosphere, but we believe in our team, and we prepared, like, we prepared so well, and the coaches got us ready, and, um, you know, we stayed calm, and everybody can do their job, and, you know, that, I got hats off to the 10 other guys on the offense. They made it, you know, they, made it, they make it easy for me. So. What happened on the touchdown to Miles Boykin? Uh, the man is rangy, can't you tell? He, amazing catch. He's been working his butt off all year, and uh, he deserves it. So it was awesome. What does a win over LSU and, and 10 wins on the season mean? Oh, it means so much. Uh, from last year, you know, 
we've been rebuilding since January, and um, to get 10 wins is, you know, it, it just shows, you know, hard work paid off, and you know, it's a great way to start off the new year. You're super composed and poised, Ian. Congratulations, awesome. Thank you very Mark. Much. What a game by Ian Book. Came off the bench in the second half to lead them to the win. There'll be better days for the Bayou Bengals. Tony, a big game on defense. Coming up on 5 p.m., ESPN, college football player for the Rose Bowl, presented by Northwestern Mutual. For Rod Gilmore and Quinn Kessnick, I'm Mark Jones. Folks, happy new year. Thanks for watching. So long from Orlando.